in the first season, how I sat down with everybody's like, look guys, like I don't know nothing about this space. Showtime come along at ESPN and I, they come along, then that time will determine what's going on with us and our business. Like, but the way I'm approaching it, 25, 25, 25, 25. Initially, we're talking about a $25,000 investment and my investment goes to 500 to a million dollars and it keeps rising. I'm like, bro, like I can't give you 25% of the company. I'm paying for the flights. I'm paying for the rooms. Everything is expensed on Brandon Marshall. So now the investment increased by 10 times. Right. Damn boy, you funky Friday, you got me open. Dog, I'm not supposed to be talking about this no, no more. Bro. I feel like you hurt, as you oh, should for be. sure. Okay. For sure, like, I'm not saying that I did everything right and everything perfect. But when you talk about bad business, then the question I ask is like, were you paid? What we agreed on, what we talked about, were you paid? Yes. Yo, 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 what are you doing? I'm giving you unbelievable content for the masses. And you just gonna keep it to yourself? Do me a favor, tap that red button right there, subscribe, and it literally takes no time. Try to see what happens. Yo, what's good? What's poppin'? What it is, what it ain't, what it could be, what it should be, what it would be. Cam Newton the song, Mr. Boogie to All. And I'm here with another episode of Funky Friday. And I promise, I really do promise, to give good content for the masses. But most of all, I promise to keep it funky for your asses. Now this particular individual, how can I explain him? If you're going off what you hear about him, a one of one, a pioneer, a philanthropist, a person who is a trailblazer. Uh, and I've been honored to call this person a friend. And also really respectfully, like a mentor in a, in a sense to this new wave of media. Uh, former NFL player, business owner, entrepreneur. I've, if, I, if I missed anything, you already know. But present to some and introduce to others, Brandon Marshall. I appreciate that. <clears throat> now you ain't missed nothing, <clears throat> but I will say that first, this is going to be a dope conversation. Mm -hmm. I need some tissue because I'm in a very zen, vulnerable state. Mm. Okay, yeah, I need some tissue, right? Um, <clears throat> already tearing up, thinking about, you know what I'm saying, the type of conversations that we've had over the last couple months, even the last couple years. Yeah. You know, when you talk about the introduction, the biggest thing for me right now is, all right, I know who Brandon Marshall the entrepreneur is. Mm -hmm. I know who Brandon Marshall the football player is. Mm -hmm. I know who Brandon Marshall the father is. Who is Brandon Marshall? Yeah. Right? And, yeah. you know, I just want to say thank you to you because I feel like you're a pioneer in that space when it comes to being authentically you, yes, unapologetically you. You know, there was a lot of us sitting back like, what, what, is, what is these these hats Cam wearing? Like, why are you dressing like that? Da, da, da. It's like you had your own personality, bro. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I always say that in the league, bro, we're institutionalized. It's cookie cutter. It's a box. Just how we dress is how we talk. We answer this, the, the questions the same way. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of us is finally figuring out who we are and it's a struggle. And I'm turning 40 and that's where I'm at right now. You can bring in that shade. Oh, right cool. there, perfect. Yeah. So, really, bro, like, I'm gonna build up to it. You know, I, I, I feel like, as I always, as I always call it, I think we live in the, we live in this in this media space where it's called or labeled a podcast. That's right. But I usually say this off camera, but I'm gonna tell you on camera where it's like, I want this to be a candid conversation. Um, really for you, bro, I'm a, and I'm, and I'm bringing it full circle, but being in the NFL, <clears throat> just tell me about, I wouldn't say a journeyman, but you've, Denver Broncos, Bears, Jets, um, 
Am I missing any teams? Giants, Giants. Miami Dolphins, Miami. Seattle, a little cup of tea with New Orleans Saints. Correct. Up to? Uh, you had a beignet. <laughs> you had a beignet. <laughs> right. Yo, New Orleans was dope, bro. Right. I, but yeah. which <laughs> system from the football aspect did you love most? Coach Shanahan. So I was drafted in 2006 <clears throat> um, to the Denver Broncos. Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan's dad was the head coach, right? Yeah. And so we came from that system. And on draft day, when they called me, you know, fourth round, 119th pick, you know, they were like, yo, it wasn't even Coach Shanahan. I don't even know who the hell called me. It might have been an intern. Mm. they like, yo, um, we're going to take you on this next pick. Be ready to play tight end. What? Yeah, and I'm like, yo, okay, don't matter. Just draft me because I, I don't know why I thought I was going to go Second, third round. Remember the quarterback from Arkansas, Mac, Mike Jones, Mike the Jones. white guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> so I was like, I don't know why I was obsessed with him, but I saw that he just ran a, a 4 3 40, yeah. and then he got and drafted in the Jacks. first round, went to, to the, the Jaguars Jack. yeah. in the first round. Uh -huh. So in my mind, I was like, if I run good, I'll probably sneak into the second, maybe third round. Well, second round came, no call. Third round came, no call. I'm crying. You know what I'm saying? In the bathroom with my older brother. You know, thinking my it's over. Huh. Fourth round come, you know, I get the call from Coach Shanahan, and you know that call totally changed, ch changed my life and and my family's life. And a lot of times we think about that from a financial standpoint, but it's not even from a financial standpoint. It's from an exposure standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like when I got drafted, it was the first time I tasted red wine with Jay Cutler. Like what the hell? We go out to Earl's when we get to Denver, and he's like, "Yo, get us some cab." What is cab? Mm. Give me a, a steak uh, medium. You know where we come yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. I want it well done. Yeah, talking about, I don't want to see <laughs> shit bleeding. You're right. right. So, you know, traveling the world, playing golf. The first time I played golf was Coach Shanahan's golf tournament. You know, on the way, me, Jay Cutler, Tony Scheffler going to Coach Shanahan's golf tournament. Mm -hmm. And we stop at a Walmart and I get a box of clubs, sticks. <laughs> You feel me? So like, you about to think you about to play putt putt, man? Right. <laughs> the fuck, they hit that bit far, right? So you know, it's it's it wasn't only you know the financial opportunity, but it was just just exposure, bro, mm -hmm. that really changed the trajectory of my family forever. But what did you run in the forty? <laughs> I ran a, a four 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 at pro day, and at combine I ran a four four nine. Bruh, I was moving. Like, what you want me to say, Cam? Cam, see, you be sleeping on me. You know what? When, when I did, no. I did, I did another one of your shows, and it, and then you uh, forget where I went to school. No, I you forgot must the forget. Number. No, it was you, a number. It was the number. It was a number. It was. Number. I was like, yo, Cam, really be sleeping on my career. No, I didn't, bro. Well, with that being said, do you consider yourself a Hall of Fame receiver? In every shadow, every spotlight, there's a tale, and my Mashika hat is the narrator. You know I never step out without a hat. There's a reason for that. It's more than just a hat, it's a vibe. It's the main character. These aren't your run of the mill hats, folks. They're handcrafted and tailored to you. Here's the deal. You can rock a Mashika hat too. Head to Mashika.com, use the code FUNKY to get 10% off, and trust me, once you feel that Mashika magic, there's no turning back. All right. Yes, I'm a Hall of Famer from a number standpoint. The thing that scares me about the Hall of Fame, and it's the first time I, I talked about it like, like this. Hold on, hold on, first off, <clears throat> I got you out your element. <laughs> what you mean? Got you out your, cause you're not used to being on this side though. For the last couple of years, bro, 95% of the times that we've seen you on TV, you've controlled the narrative. Right, facts. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Where my <laughs> gotcha. So we gonna we gonna uncover his ass. Lying. Yeah, we gonna, his we gonna ass. have some fun with this. And I think I'm getting all text messages. I said, "Hey y'all, I'm, I'm interviewing uh, Brandon Marshall. What y'all want me to ask him?" <laughs> Man, fuck that motherfucker. Okay, cool. I'm gonna put that in there. Do I cite the source? Hell yeah. Tell him that. <laughs> okay. I like yeah. that. Oh, you just taught me something though, because we study each other. Mm. So that's what you do. You have a whole group thread, and then like boom, and then you got your people that chime in outside of. It's producers. almost like Clubhouse. Ooh, I like that, Cam. Capping, I'm capping. It's really Ashe Kennedy, 
who really helps me out. Shout out to Ashe, New York's very own, you feel me? And uh, she keep me in the ballpark and then... Right. Well, that's okay. the idea there because like, I think that's the hardest part for what we, you know, where we're at right now, this new media space is, you know, sitting on this side, like you said, yeah. when, you know, studying, like how did, it's easy for us to ask, answer questions. We sat in that seat for, you know, 12, 13, 14 years. Mm -hmm. We're so media trained, but to be an interviewer, that's a whole nother skill set. It's a whole, there's an art and science to that. And, but when you get into your world, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's all you want to do is have a conversation. Yeah. And so, like, I, I mean, I realized that back in the day when we first met. But now this is the crazy part about uh, this show. We can, you know, our chemistry, our continuity is so crazy. We can talk about so much. Yeah. But let me answer your question as far as Hall of Fame is like, what I don't like about this conversation or how we approach the conversation when we know we him, mm -hmm. we're him, it's like we're bitter. We hold a grudge towards the NFL. Like I'm not trying to live with no resentment. I'm not trying to live uh, waking up every single day thinking about, am I going to get the call? Somebody going to knock on my door. Yo, Brandon, you made it to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Like I woke up every single day, bro, when I was since I was a jit and <clears throat> did everything just to be the best me yeah. when it came to football. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I love the game. And so I can sleep at night knowing that I gave it my all. And when you look at the numbers, the numbers, they're, they're Hall of Fame worthy. Now, what scares me is I never made it to the playoffs. 13 years in the NFL, never made it to the playoffs. That's, that's significant. Mm -hmm. I would say it has a lot to do with playing with 17, 18 quarterbacks because any quarterback I played with, mm -hmm. I did numbers. Hell, I made them Pro Bowl players. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like they had their best years playing with me. And this is, I, and I say this, bro, I'm not, I, it, it's because it's out of, I man, never- Man, keep you're, it you're, funky, you're, nigga. Like, I know, fuck it's all funky that other Friday, shit. Bet, like, all man, right, keep bet. it funky. This ain't no shit to be biting your tongue, snipping your damn dreads, <laughs> just like, oh, I'm not gonna say it like this because right. I know it's gonna ruffle, ruffle that shit. Keep, like get this shit off your chest, bro. Like, yeah. all right. So that's what. Talk. So that's so that's what it is. It's like, <clears throat> you know, seventeen different quarterbacks, maybe even a few more, and it didn't matter who it was. You know, Jay Cutler, the Kyle Orton, uh, Fitzpatrick, Fitz, Fitz, uh, Fitz always. That's my guy. He always had some amazing years. He was one of those guys too to always produce wherever he went. But like for me, like all these quarterbacks, they had their best years with me. So like I know that, you know. I deserve that, but really, bro, like, if it never, if I never get the call, or maybe I get the call, my, I'm dead, my kids get the call, mm -hmm. and they're representing me, I'm cool, I'm content. I'm more fulfilled now doing what I'm doing today than I was playing ball. Mm. You feel me? So, like, that's a blessing in itself, because so many of us, we don't know how to transition. We don't have anything to transition to. Mm. You know, and like I, I like I feel like I hit it. Like there's there's a book, a beautiful book, and you will love this book. It's called the it's called the Second Mountain. You know, a lot of times we think like you know us, you know Cam Newton MVP 2015 go to the 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 you know the Super Bowl and you Superman, you the face of the league for a couple of years, and it's like oh that's the peak, that's the mountain. Mm -hmm. I would actually push back and say that Cam Newton today mm -hmm. is going to be bigger than the Cam Newton of yesterday. Yes, sir. Right, and I feel the same way about myself. Mm -hmm. That's the Second Mountain. And so, like, I'm more fulfilled going up that second mountain because it's more rewarding because, like, you get to the peak and then you get to the valley, which is exactly where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. And In present now, time. In present time. Mm -hmm. But now when you go up, you've learned from that first climb. Yeah. So you coming up with less shit. Yeah. You coming up with more experience, more, more knowledge. You know what I'm saying? So it's more rewarding. So a lot of people don't know this statistic that I think is, when you talk about Dominance, when you talk about impact, right? This needs to be mentioned of how dominant you were. How many people have had a game? Was it 20 receptions? Mm -hmm. 21. Can you do some for me? <laughs> Can you hit it with the rich yeah. flip? 21 right. receptions in one game. Mm -hmm. Mike, not two, not three, not. 
This my show, so I can talk how I want to. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> 21. Yeah. No savage. Like, who else has done that? Yeah. Well, T.O. had the record before, and I broke T.O.'s record. <laughs> you a sucker. Like... <laughs> You know, listen, you know, I don't talk too, I don't talk, I, I like to keep it. Uh, nah, professional. You got to talk greasy to T.O. Yeah. Oh, that's my, that's my shot. Yeah. <laughs> T.O. had the record. What was his record? Uh, I think it was 20. Mm. It was 20. I like, T hey, listen, T.O., I looked up to T.O. <clears throat> I just don't like how T.O. is carrying himself. So every time I get an opportunity, because he always takes shots. He's like, you know, man, you're just too old to be doing that. But. T.O., I learned a lot from T.O., but we ain't going to do that right now. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Let me go. Stop. 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 So, <clears throat> um, T.O. did it. You know, there was a game. There was another game in that, or the year before, I had 18 catches going against uh, Cromartie and the Chargers. And that was a, that was a moment. Um, and then the following year, Josh McDaniels come in, Kyle Orton comes in. And then I go for 21 catches. But the beautiful thing about that story, <clears throat> right, because you know I love mental health, I love mental fitness, I love yeah. performance. Walking out of that game, like what, before that week, before that game, I used to say this thing called crescendo. And it, it, from a music standpoint, what crescendo is, it's like, it's like, it's like a buildup. That's what it means, right? It's like, yeah. So like Monday comes, practice, like I'm just in the meeting rooms and I'm just like chilling, I'm real calm. Boom, Tuesdays are off day, so nobody see me. Wednesday come, I'm on the practice field. I'm a little louder. I got, my, I got my pajama pants on. You know what I'm saying? Hey, here's what we doing. It's what I'm on this week. I'm the rabbit. You feel me? Like, I'm yeah, setting the, the whole team I'm setting the tempo. follows me. This is where we at on Wednesday. <laughs> Thursday, I'm a little louder. Friday, I'm loud as shit. Crescendo, but I would say it. Crescendo, 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 crescendo. Right, so like that week, I was on, Jay-Z just dropped the album. I don't even remember that. The, the what album. year? It was 2010. Let's look that up. So 2010. But that's when Jay-Z. Was that Kingdom Come? That was Kingdom Come? I don't know what life will be in H-I-P, H-O-P, yeah. <laughs> what after boy, H-O-V. Right. Not only hip-hop's kingdom, hip-hop savior, but after this for you might owe me okay. a favor when Kingdom Come. But right. he's not fucking with me when we come to oh, this uh, day. Don't, don't, don't tell the people. Okay. Chill, all right, all right, chill, all right, all right. chill, chill, chill. Christendo! Yeah. <laughs> You from Atlanta? What you know hey, about hoes? What you oh, know about hoes? I'm sorry, I just fucked that up, bro. <laughs> no, you good. <laughs> so, you from Atlanta, boy. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> so anyways, during that week though, Jay Z just came out uh, with a new album, but that was the time where he was morphing into his like his business. manhood yeah, and business. Yeah, yeah, it was different. It was yeah. like the blueprint. Yeah, it was like almost like in football, it's like Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald score a touchdown, score another touchdown, score score another touchdown, and then it was like hand the ball to the ref. Yeah, right. It was like I'm supposed to do this. Yeah, what are we talking about, mm -hmm. right? So, what I did that week was I was I like I like uh, embraced and like. Morphed into in my mind, like I'm Jay Z this week, mm. right? I'm supposed to do this. So the crescendo was just like the whole week was crescendo, 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 all the way up until Sunday. I walk out, Michael Smith <clears throat> was on ESPN at the time. He's standing there. I walk out the locker room, I took off my headphones, and I'm like, Wait. Blueprint three. Blue, 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 blueprint, blueprint three. three. Okay, there it is. What was that? What was the song on that though? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. What it was, Hove is the greatest, Hove is the best, Hove is, is the blueprint to everything that me, Cam Newton doing, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Thank blah, you. blah, 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 right? So, <clears throat> you know, I walk out and then Michael Smith standing there, I, I walk up to him, I say, yo, I just want you to know because I want you to be able to report this. This is going to be the greatest game I've ever played. Boom. Put my headphones on. I Michael Smith is who? Reporter, black guy. Now he's on Peacock. So uh, he the, was the, the one with Jamil, Jamil, the, Jamil the, Smith. With the, with the yes, the glasses. With the glasses. Lice, yes. Okay. Yes. So Jim, yeah, him. And he was a beat writer for, for Denver, or was he with ESPN? No, then? he was just with ESPN. Then. Okay. So boom, I had that conversation. Then you know, 
we go, I, the, I had that type of game. But the, the, the thing that, the reason why I love that story and the reason why I love that time is because, you know, it's like, yo, the world that we want to see or we want to live in, we can create if we actually say it and believe it. You feel me? Like, you got to speak this shit into existence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's no doubt in my mind. Like, even now where I'm at in, 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 in this phase of my life, my mom is so, I, bless her heart. <clears throat> You know, like I'm built in this company, I'm an entrepreneur, and I would say this is probably the second worst time in the in the history of the world to be an entrepreneur. Venture capitalist, venture dollars is dried up. I would say we're in a recession. So like raising 20, 30 million dollars is almost impossible, especially if you're black, right? Mm -hmm. To scale a company. And so my mom might text me a, a, a passage or something, but baby, this and that. And it's like, mom, do you not know who you who you birthed? I'm never folding. Mm. Like, what are you talking about? You think you 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 wasting time texting me, talking about picking my head up, talking about baby, it's gonna be okay. I know it's gonna be okay because I already felt this when I was in college, mm. when you was living in Atlanta and your house burnt down, and I had to send home my whole Pell Grant, and I come home during Christmas time, and we living in on off of Latonia, Wesley Chapel. Mm -hmm. There's eight of us in a two bedroom hotel. That's where we celebrating Christmas. I already felt this pain. Went to the tattoo parlor, got star here, star there, born, die. Boom, so anytime you see me do this in football, boom, like that's me, like I was born a star, die a star. I felt that shit. Sitting in my hotel Friday night before the Saturday game kickoff. My dreams, everything there. Confidence shooken. Never felt that shit before. And I had to get up and say, no, I was born a star, I'm a daughter star. I already felt this. So it's like, you know, and this is the first time I even said this to my mom. Like, it's, you wasting your time texting me this. Like, I already felt this, bro. Like, this is the second mountain. I already know what I'm up against. So... You know, like you gotta, you gotta understand who you are. You gotta understand your purpose. And I would, I would say that you gotta understand who you are. You gotta understand your purpose, and you gotta speak life into yourself every single day because the world's gonna tear you down. Mm -hmm. The world's gonna tell you opposite, and you can't waver. And we built like that, like especially as ball players, right? Like, you know, you know that. In your biggest stage, lose the Super Bowl, you got the towel over your head, and it's da da da. -da. But do you do you waver? Do you know who Cam Newton is? Do you damn? I just want MVP. Am I different? No, you know who you are. So there's some people in this world that just never waver. So like, that's why I love that story is because I spoke that into existence. If I can speak, if I can speak making it to the NFL into existence, if I can speak, you know, 21 catches into an existence, I can speak, you know, creating a billion dollar multimedia or, 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 or a media platform into existence. Mm -hmm. I can do that. I think that right there is something as I like to refer to is jump. Gotta jump. Hmm. And we do it all the time in, in, in sports where we, where we go to that dark place, right? And you channel that energy, that rage, that fear, that anxiety, the everything comes to you in a way that is harmonious to the elements mm -hmm. when you're on the field. It's like, bro, you nervous? Fuck, no, I ain't nervous. But you nervous as a motherfucker. Yeah, the butterfly. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like, ooh, what the fuck is this? Like. Cotton mouth, got a shit, got a pee, got a like, damn, like, hand sweating, but you control it in a way that when you first get hit, it's like, oof, all right. Right, right. Here we go, you know. <clears throat> and when you were talking about your mom, it brought me to a point of reminding people don't really know you, right? Um, and I say that respectfully because when I'm reminded about the, uh, the Super Bowl experience, right, 
the institutionalized Cam did everything that I was supposed to do, mm -hmm. right? After the game, I didn't want to walk off at, like a coward. I, I went and shook Peyton's hand and said, man, great game, man, it was a pleasure, you know, Happy writings to your to your uh, to your retirement, you know, because that was obviously his last game. And then, boom! I did everything right, but when it settled in, and I got to the locker room, and I said to myself, "I really fucked up the biggest opportunity of my life," and how we translate emotions mm -hmm. as a culture is not healthy. Because what I wanted to, I wanted to fight. Explain. You see what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to fight. Like, it was like... Physically, like, really, like, literally. bitch-ass nigga, why the fuck is you asking me this goddamn question? Fight. You see what mm. I'm saying? I didn't know how to express myself. You know what I'm saying? So, when you seeing that, it's me, like, at the podium, like, I'm biting, like, I'm, I'm there. You're struggling with yourself. I'm, 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 I'm fighting with myself internally because a lot of people don't know that person that you got to go, hey, hey, yo, hey, bug, we need you. He the asshole. All right, cool. Boom. This the nigga that going, you know what I mean? Like one of them situations. Like you really have these kind of compartments in your brain, in your, in your life that you got to like, I never played as Cam or Cameron Newton. You know, I've always played as Boogie. Like nigga, that nigga right there ain't nothing to be fucked with. When I go home, my kids don't know Boogie. They know daddy. You see what I'm saying? Like it's it, it, that's we, so interesting to me. Sorry to cut you off. The reason why that's interesting because that's why I struggled in a in the first half of my career because I was the same person. Yeah. I didn't know you can create alter egos. Mm -hmm. Like I was the fucking beast on the field and off the field. Yeah. So that's a to me that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't have that, bro. That's so, cr that's that's crazy. So with that. It's going, it's, it, it, you see where I'm going with this, right? And, and um, with this football side, I taught my, I need outlets. Because people may see from the outside looking in, it's like, yo, this nigga can set in the vibe. But really, I'm getting my thoughts together. And then, boom, I already done played this out. I know how I'm going to come here with this. And as it's rolling out, it may look crazy to most or some. But for me, it's like I'm always in control. Well, it's crazy, bro. Sorry to interrupt you, but like we have a similar creative process and approach. So like we talked about the music and people won't, they maybe see some BTS of this where like you set the tone. It's like almost like church is praise and worship because you're entering, you're creating the atmosphere, the spirit that you're, that you're trying to, mm -hmm. you know, feel. And so like when you were doing it, I saw it. I was like, damn, that's, that's me right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it is it, it's, it's interesting to see you in this process. I do want to say this. Um, you go back to 2015. I so appreciate you. And I appreciate you because, and again, I ain't come here to, damn, I'm kind of coming off real cocky. But I was the first athlete to be a full-time athlete, active athlete, full-time broadcaster. Mm -hmm. That was Super Bowl what? Uh, 50. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. I'm on the sideline covering it, Cam. Nigga, I seen you the one we was taking the pictures. You forgot that. No, that's where I'm going with it. Uh, Hold on. Listen, Linda. Listen, <laughs> Linda. So I'm sitting there. You Cam Newton. I know I'm B. Marsh, mm -hmm. but you Cam Newton, Superman himself, MVP him. That's his MVP. Yeah, Y'all should have been undefeated that year. Mm. And I'm standing on the sideline, boom. Cam, 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 like a fan. I didn't receive it like that. You came right over. Yo, what up, B Mars? You gave me time. Mm -hmm. Bro, you know how that blessed me, bro? That was like, that was like Cam Newton talking to a five-year-old kid. And then a the network looking at me like, damn, you got access like that. And so, like, I couldn't even understand. I'm like, damn, this dude is on at the biggest, on the biggest stage of his career. Biggest stage of his career, and he giving me time. Bro, everybody was on the sideline. The who's who, the stars. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, bro, that's a real cat right there. Humble. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not T.O. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I wasn't Jerry Rice or anybody like that. I'm, you know, I, I got the career I have, but like, you gave me time. You made me feel bigger than the world on your biggest stage. I would never forget that. So thank you. 
Thank you, bro. It was a true blessing. Uh, bro, <clears throat> like I said, bro, we on Funky Friday, bro. Man, I'm the nigga who I want my kids to look up to. Just like my daddy is the nigga I want to be. See what I'm saying? And the king, like, if you see my dad, bro, he going to come in here probably with, like, some overalls. You ain't going to think he, you know what I'm saying? But his presence. Yeah, I, I, I knew what a lion was, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know how to carry myself. I don't, I'll, I'm having this kind of, this, this, this toy with my son right now. It's like, bro, you got to be a man, son. Like, all that suck-ass shit. <laughs> like, no, I, I don't stand on that. Cam, am I wrong? I'm so, I got twins, eight years old, and I got a four-year-old, okay? My eight-year-old boy, Z. Hold on, you got twins. I got twins, boy and a girl, Z and Ziggy. They, hold up, eight years old and four years old? And I got, no, I got, no, I got a four-year-old boy. I got twins, eight years old, boy and a girl, oh. and I got a four-year-old boy. Oh, okay. Shit. And that's Zoe, baby Zoe. So my eight-year-old son, he'd be like, yeah, yeah. Son, that bitch ass voice don't do that. <laughs> hey, listen, bro. You know, I be in the word. Hey, listen, bro. Can't, can't. I be like, son, I be like, I'm, son, you know, daddy ain't supposed to be cursing. So I be camping. Like, daddy ain't supposed to be cursing, but I'm trying to emphasize, like, we can't do the bitch ass voice. <laughs> With the Bible, right? Here. But he get it. Yeah. I'm like, we not doing that. Yeah. We not doing that. Like, we can tap into emotion. We can cry together. We can do all of that. But what we not doing is we not, we not doing that. I can't get it. No, bro. Come to me like, hey, dad, here's the problem. Boom, let's communicate, right? But I'm in this space, like, I feel really good about saying it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, damn, he's eight. Am I wrong? Because I'm like, bro. I'm like, son, that's the bitch ass voice. <laughs> but look, 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 real, real Don't shit. Real shit. When I, when, when it was, what's today? Boom. I would say it was Wednesday night of this week. My five-year-old son, he's the only son who has my, my prefix, mm -hmm. Cam. Children, his name is Camitis, but the prefix to that is Cam. And then obviously I, I love Midas, the, the, uh, the god of the touch, right? The golden touch. But he has this impeccable relationship with my nanny. Mm -hmm. She's heaven sent. She's unbelievable. Uh, she I, just to protect her and and her. She they love her, right? He didn't have school because of the fall break. He comes downstairs. I'm having a conversation. I'm just debriefing my day. It's it's like how I plan my nights out, right? We eat dinner together. They go take a bath or whatever, boom. And that's that's really me and my girl's time, you know? Like we talk, we do this, we do that. We try to give each other, be present. While we're talking, um, Kamitis and my nanny comes downstairs and she says, Cam, Kamitis has to ask you something. And he's talking to me, but he's not looking at me. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And He's like, I, I want to, I want to go and uh, sleep in Kiri's room. And I said, Hey, hey, hey. Mm -hmm. He said, Yes, sir. I said, You look at me when I'm talking to you. Right? He's five. As a man, son, you look a man in his eye when you talk to him. That teaches number one, you're not scared of him. That teaches number two, you respect him. Mm -hmm. And teaches number three, that you're stern in everything. He's five. That's right. Right? He then looks at me, he says, Daddy, I wanna go sleep in Kiri's room and I just wanna go by myself. They got bump beds, you know, boom, whatever. I said, okay, that's cool. Boom. He leaves. My girl, turns over, well, she's looking, damn it, she's so emotional. She's about to cry, she's like, oh my God, that was just so beautiful. Right, 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 right. right. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Sorry, I'm so sorry, bro, this is why. 
when we in our when our when we when we in our masculine energy, it's the biggest turn on to every woman, dog. These mm. niggas don't understand. You know, like real shit. Oh my goodness. Like real shit. But she brought out something though. Woo. In that in that stare down, she said, "Babe, do you know he respects you so much that he is afraid to look you in your eye." Mm. So to your point, mm. I want to be the nigga my kids look up to because I was that same way. Mm. I could, I was, I was fearful of my dad. You did know? you, did you, did, can you recall a moment where you were afraid to look at your pops yeah. in the eyes like yeah, that? Of course. Wow. But, but it's, it's respect. Yes. You know, and a lot of, I, we always give women hard times, but this is my challenge to men. We need more men being men. Mm -hmm. Once that is set, then it is what it is. Man, everybody who knows me know I'm a man's man, bro. I judge a man off three principles. Mm. Number one, how does your woman or your partner treat you? Number two, if you have children, how do your children treat you? And number three, how does other men treat you? Mm. So break that down for me now. So, All three areas, how it's supposed to look. Number one, everybody knows, boom, like as a, as a woman, or I'm, I'm speaking from a uh, heterosexual man. Don't, don't, don't get us in trouble like no. you did a year or no. two years ago no. when you, uh, no. what did no. you say? No. What did you say? No. You had to have no. mama and no. dad to come on no. the podcast. No, no, no. <laughs> what was you doing? No, I'm speaking from my perspective. Okay. Don't get and I'm banned. saying, <laughs> and I'm saying, from a man, if your partner does not respect or or you haven't influenced your partner in a right. way that she knows how to act with you in her presence and without you in her presence, it's like, yo, what are we really doing? You see what I'm saying? Right. It's like we see two different human beings when they're in the presence of something and then they're not in the presence of something. What I'm learning there, and it, I think it, it, it will piggyback, off, piggyback nicely off of what you're saying is when a man um, can, um, when a man knows who he is, understands where they're going, right? A woman be more open to participating. I'm going to say that. Like, I, I'm being very careful with my language because I don't want to have a Cam Newton moment it's okay. from two years ago. But my <laughs> heart's pure, though. I never no, wanted to minimize or suppress women. No, I, I, I know. Did. I know. I'm just, I'm just making yeah. light of it. But what I'm saying is because, no, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. Like, a lot of men feel the way you feel. You know what I'm saying? But we live in a very sensitive time right now. Very sensitive. You know what I'm saying? And I, I got money to make our kids to take care of. But that's cool. So, you feel but, me? I, but I will keep it like this. It's time for men to be men, bro. 100%. Right. But what we got, that's the point, though, is be a man. Mm -hmm. you know, what we talked about, like when that moment that you had with your lady and your son, that's, that's what women want to see. When, when they see you and your masculine energy. Yeah. But you also got to have the feminine side, too. Yeah. It's important to have both. Yeah. It's a balance. Yeah. But when they see you in that, they're more comfortable saying like, damn, that's somebody I can trust. That's somebody I can follow when I need to follow. Protect me. There you go. That's but we all, don't know. Yes. That's all, that's all I, boom. So with that, it's up to the man too, to know how to protect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we don't just protect with brute. We protect with words, right? Like that, but you need to, but you need to ex expand on that if you if you can, because like I, I think, bro, that like I, it, it, over the last couple of years, I've been learning that, and bro, so a lot of men don't understand that, bro. What, like, what a, like that's over. A it's a major. Years. It's a big responsibility for a man to lead. That's not a small task to say, right? But when a man is in full control of himself. Right. That's not to say he's not going to get tempted. He's not going to make mistakes. That's not, that's not to say he's not going to mess up in certain situations. But when it comes to your household, your partner should not should not be confused if you can protect her, not only physically, but emotionally. That's right. There you go. Bingo. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And. Also, it goes both ways from but, the but, woman but, 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 too. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please ahead, let me say ahead, this. It goes both ways from the from the man and the woman. From the man, a man can't just say, "Woman, go get my go get my meal ready." 
I'm about to come. Like, no, it has to be love there. And also, a, a woman can't challenge a man and say, here you go. Yo, you gonna do that job again, huh? Mm, that you ain't down, you know, our light's still off. You know what I'm saying? Like, minimizing, I don't believe in no type of suppression in a relationship. I believe, bro, I don't just do one finger, one pinky, one thumb. Like, I really believe in love. You see what I'm saying? Like, when your partner is loved and, and is there, you're able to really bring out a side that it's like, it's, it's, it's penetrating the atmosphere, right? Yeah. I know there's 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 some belief out there that says that uh, men were called to what lead, love, mm -hmm. yes, but and 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 women like men needs respect, right? Like, um, what I'm saying here is when you talk about emotional, bro, like I we don't know that as men, no. You know what I'm saying? When you talked about, when you said you hit, you said something extremely critical. Because when men, we think about what a man, a man's man look like. It's protect, it's brute strength, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, Don't try me, motherfucker. Yeah, my what you, my, my kids, my no, it's not that emotionally. And this is what I'm learning. I'm in this process right now. It's like, and, and like you're giving little jewels here and there. It's like, yo, this is my, me and my lady's time. The kids is over here. Now I'm spending, I'm dedicating this time to my lady. We don't have that routine. We don't have that playbook as men, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and men, we need to have these type of conversations where we, where we can understand what that looks like. It's not just providing physically, but when you talk about emotionally, it's like, hey, babe, like, are you okay? How are you doing? You know what I mean? What's going on in your life? What's on your mind? Put the phone down. I'm right here with you. You know what I'm saying? But you know who taught me that though? Who's that? My partner there's like, that's a motherfucker, boy. She hard. They always say like there's that one woman. No, though. bro. That like, one that that one can change you. Like she hard, bro. I believe it. Like, she has exposed a lot of shit in me that I didn't know. Like, nobody held me that's accountable. And I'll, I, I say this respectfully, I'll have love for both of my baby. I have a due diligence to protect two women in my life by default, mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm on this earth, I will never allow no other man to disrespect the mother of my children because they share, we share something mm -hmm. from here to eternity. And my partner now understands that, respect mm -hmm. and respectfully. But she has unlocked this emotion in me that I was like, yo, like I'm hard body. Cause Cecil Newton, <laughs> he hard body. My dad never told me, son, hey, listen, look at me. I love you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I know he loves me. Now don't get me wrong. I know he loves me. And there's no other person that I would rather have in my corner than him. But that was not my, circumstance growing mm -hmm. up. So I built up this whole mantra like in relationships, in situations where I love was there, is here, but I never was able to unlock this, this softness that it's like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I've, I, I don't even know if I've perfected it, but I've unlocked something where I know like my children know, and it's, it's, it'd be so beautiful just to witness it be like, like we eating dinner last night, bro. I'm sorry, I'm bringing you into my world. No, but come these, on. This, these are real like conversations. But these examples is what we all need to hear and see, because like that's well, sometimes we don't have these examples, bro. This is we get it off the podcast. Yeah. So my children knows me the best. Yeah. Right. And when I say knows me, it's like I can go in and I can say, hey, hey, sit your behind down, right? Right? Yeah. That, that's that daddy voice that gets activated. Like everything stops. It's like I'm the king of the jungle in my house. It's like, right? right? And they know when it's a joke. That's good. That's you see good. what I'm saying? I, I, I know. I they know they at. know when it's like, that's play, play, daddy. Yeah. Daddy! Uh, you know, right, like, right. it's like I got boy boys. You know what I mean? I got five boys and they all run up to me and they try to knock me over. Boom. But if I say, hey, stop, 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 boom, they're going to stop. Hey, you get if I say stop in a certain way too, they're like, ah, right. you know, that's a plan. So we had the dinner table last night and, I'm, and we're all eating. Everybody's eating. I said, I was blessed enough to have a pound cake um, 
somebody made for me. Delicious, by the way. Don't, don't say, I, I love how you said that, but just say you're rich. Huh? Just say you're rich. I'm not. Cam, you got some. You got a chef. You got a nanny. I don't. I chef, don't have a Cam. chef. Cam. That's my partner. Cam, what you say? This is Funky Friday. This is Funky <laughs> Friday. Man, I'm he said, blessed. Hey, what Cam say? I'm blessed to have a pound cake. Mm. No, you blessed to have a pastry maker. You have a chef and no. a pastry maker. <laughs> Just tell me if you have a pastry maker. Who made the cake? Am I lying? Who made the cake? I'm lying. Who what made the cake? Uh, Who is this lady? No, no Lakeisha, Miss Lakeisha. I want no. Just say I'm Cam Newton. I'm Superman, and I got a chef. I got a pastry maker. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something. And I got an Annie. Zoom in right I got here. A, do you have a driver? Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in right here. This lady right here. She ain't paying me. She ain't doing nothing for me. But when I tell you. She got a pound cake that'll make you. Okay, her name is Miss Lakeisha. She from. Uh, she says she's from Dead County, three hundred five. Oh, she from. So, okay, the Yayo. You did. So that's where I got the pound cake. She from. brought it to your crib. She did not. I went to go get it from her house. Respectfully, she had her husband Bobby there too. Okay. So right. as I was rudely interrupted from my intimate <laughs> story. Man, now I'm going move. back. Oh, now I we got to be surprised if you had a pastry maker. I That's all I'm not. saying. Go bro, ahead. I bake though, bro. Did you know that? Go finish your story. Go. <laughs> That's the ADD kicking in. You ain't the only nigga that's crazy in here. See? <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. So my children knows me the best. We're sitting at dinner, and I challenge. I tell them. I say, "Hey, listen." Whoever eat their food first, go upstairs and get a, get a bath and come back down, y'all get dessert. Boom. But that was just like a caveat to get everybody upstairs so me and, you know what I'm saying, my girl can have that conversation. They come back down fresh, you know, they ready to get in bed. Boom. By that time, it's about like 9 o'clock, so they got to go to bed. So if they ask me to, Daddy, can I watch a movie tonight? Nope. School night. Boom. Mm -hmm. That's the glitch, though. So when I'm talking, you know, they all laugh. They get all giggly when they around each other. God! Daddy, daddy, look. Miss Jazz. And then all of a sudden, Kuda not eating her food. Kuda is my daughter, Sovereign Dior. That's her name. Kuda is her nickname. Y'all need, a, she's need like, a reality show. She's like, she's eating her food and she pushing the food aside. Like, yeah, Chosen. Look, Chosen. Chosen done. He finishes food. I said, hey, Kuda. Now you over here, ga 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 ga, and you better flip into that them doggone noodles that Miss Jazz doggone ate uh, or cook. You better eat your food. <laughs> like that's just that's just them. Like right, you know what right, I'm saying. Right. Like but I was so serious. Like cool to eat your food, right. and then everybody just break. Like that's that's them. But you know that's to me that's the funnest part of fatherhood because there's times like we. I know you love accountability. I was at fellowship earlier and you came in and it was beautiful. You, you asked them, was like, hey, where, where can we get better? I was like, damn, like, you know, you're a high performer when it comes to leader, CEO. Like, I just saw some stuff there. I don't want to get off track there. And then you talked about accountability. You was like, no, accountability is critical to me. This person just started that fellowship for a couple of weeks. I'm listening. I'm in the back yeah. listening to you, watching you. Yeah. And so... Our children also holds us accountable, mm -hmm. right? And that's the funnest part for me is, you know, my kids, when I come in and I might be too ramped up, they'd be like, daddy, they're eight and four, daddy, daddy, right? Like, and I, and, and, and it was crazy because what I, the conversation I had last night with my kids, I said, look, daddy is, is in a tough position right now. I'm stressed. Mm. Okay, I need y'all to know exactly where I'm at. I need y'all to have some emotional intelligence. Cause I talk to them. I need y'all to have some emotional intelligence. So right now, if I come in, if I'm a little too ramped up, I need y'all to be like, "Daddy, you doing too much? You too high? Come down." Cause like now, what I'm training them to to, to understand is that Daddy can make mistakes. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to break. I don't want to come in and be like, "Ah, shit, you." But if I'm if I ever come in and you feel like I'm too high. Just speak to me. Hold daddy accountable. Daddy needs you right now. This is where, and, and I got to get to my game, but this is where I'm going to put my accountability hat on. And what I've learned, 
give yourself 15 minutes or however many long that you need before you get around your kids, mm. right? You're Brandon Marshall. I'm pretty sure you have a lot. But every single time, I call it Boogieville, USA, that I go into my house, my kingdom, my, my sanctuary, my place of refuge, they don't deserve that pressure. They don't deserve that stress. They didn't ask for that. So this is where you got to put you first because you are responsible for right. so many other yous and hers and Nine him. plus f three. You see what I'm saying? For everyone, there's three to four family members. Come on now. There we go. So I will challenge you. Before you go into that house, before you allow them to come into your house, however, whatever your situation is, bro, I do this technique. And it's like me and my partner so tied in. It's like it's one of them times. You feel me? And I will be in the, I will be literally in the driveway. I play my favorite song. I listen to something. I look at something. I'll, I'll take myself to that place that it's resetting. Because when I get into that doggone house, Boogie's gone. Cam's gone. Is Boogie the same person in business and football? It's, it's two different sectors. You got Boogie and Businessman Boog. So Businessman Boog. Come on now. Okay, okay cool. To but it's the me. same process when you come home. Bro, I, I have to channel that. It's like, dog, my routine is something that I had to teach myself. Mm -hmm. We all, as men, lack that process of learning or mm -hmm. going on that journey to find yourself. And you have to be selfish and that's probably a bad uh, word to describe it, but it's the only word for you to understand you. You got to put yourself first because you're responsible for so much. That's right. So to you, like to your twins and to the four-year-old, and you say to yourself, it's like, okay, boom, every single time y'all see me, I'm going to be 100%. At least I'm going to be yellow. That's right. I ain't going to let y'all see red me because right. ain't no telling what y'all going to get. That's right. And you said it. We all know children are sponges. It take one time. And you can break them. And something slip out. Oh, baby, I didn't, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. You can never erase That's that. Right. Yeah, you ever seen that moment when you look, your little girl or your little boy look up at you and they're like, and you're like, damn. Yeah, and, and I'm so glad, bro, like, you, you hitting on that. You know, I'm, one, I'm learning, so thank mm -hmm. you. But two, I feel like, you know, a lot of men need to hear this because they don't understand the process. They, they don't understand the process and how the process can determine what the product look like. Mm. Say it again, please. The process. Yo, because I had that process and had the, it took me a long time to figure it out from a business. I love what you said, uh, business boogie. Businessman book. Businessman book. So like that drive home from the facility was when I debriefed. Mm -hmm. Okay, boom. Left all that shit. Got my phone calls out the way. So when I showed up, I showed up. You there? I'm you good. present. I'm present. Right. But that was the second half of my career. Mm -hmm. First half totally failed. Mm -hmm. And so like that's the process. But that process, before we even present ourselves to our children, our loved ones, our wives, our girlfriends, or whatever, significant others will determine the product. Yeah. What do you get? So I always say that my three Ps is people, process, then product, right? So you got the people, and this is in a personal standpoint, your ladies, your lady, well, I said ladies, some people got ladies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tomato, tomato, yeah, to hey. each his own, I don't judge. Okay, so people. And then you got the process. And then the product is like the life that we want and the people that we are trying to create when it comes to our kids or try to help unfold, I would say. Mm -hmm. So that's the beautiful thing there. So, Brandon Marshall, before we get in the game, let me ask you a question. Please. <clears throat> you said something earlier. I had to, bro. I think you and I are on a collision course of becoming the Oprah Winfrey in this new media space. Mm-hmm. Competitive. Who's going to win? Okay. So 
I got to ask you a question on your own show. Please. Okay. Because it is coming down to me and you. I'm going to kick your ass. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> you said something earlier where you're like, you know, in a Super Bowl 2015, you're like, damn, how did I mess up the biggest opportunity of my life? Life. You said, yes. So my question for you is, it, do you still look at it as the biggest opportunity of your life, you know, 10 years later, almost, almost 10 years later? No. Can you explain? Um, yeah. First off, the NFL is not rigged. <laughs> Let's just put it like that. I don't think... I, I, had I... If, if we would have played Denver week 10, that Cam would have beat the fuck out of them. But that Cam didn't play that day. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? I felt tired. I was overwhelmed. I, I, I felt it was just a lot that I just was like, bro, I can't wait for this shit to be over with. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a long season, bro. And then boom, that season ended in February. Bro, OTA start damn near March. Mm-hmm. And I kept looking at myself, it's like, bro, this shit fun, but damn, I'm ready to go. <laughs> like, what time is this movie over with? You know what I'm saying? But when I look back at it now, shit, I don't, I enjoyed it. And I don't think life would be the best analogy of that specific situation. It was a chapter for sure. Mm-hmm. Even sometimes when, I, like I love Peg, and when we, like he brings out this, bro, I forgot about that, bro. Let me tell you about this story, you know what I'm saying? And it'd be crazy, cause when we be talking about certain things, like I go back and I was like, damn bro, I forgot about that. I forgot even who I was with. Damn, like I forgot about that game. Yeah, that was crazy, boom, boom, boom. I'm just so grateful to, to be able to share these moments with people. Right. You know, I'm so introverted, I'm so isolated that sometimes I even felt I do the coolest shit, but don't nobody know. Mm-hmm. I be going places and sometimes like I even be in like the market. <laughs> And he's like, bro, Cam? I'm like, yeah, bro. Why the fuck? You don't got nobody. No, oh, bro, it's just me. How you doing? You doing all right? Boom, boom, boom. I'm, I'm that type of guy. I'll, I'll go places by myself. I just feel protected, you know, at all times. But yeah, that, that was just a person who hasn't, it wasn't done bacon. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, knowing what I know now, I would have never let a situation get me out of character, which made me leave. Like I was boiling. I was, I overheard the other guy kind of talking to, and I'm saying to myself, I'm like, damn, bro. Like I never. It, it, it took me back to a time where in high school, I went to Westlake High School. We was a basketball team. We was good at football, but we were really a yeah. basketball team. We went 32 and 0 and lost in the state championship. And I was just angry. I didn't know how to feel, you know. I knew I wasn't going to school for basketball, but I still was like, yo, it's the championship. I ain't got no, I ain't got, we ain't got nothing to show for shit out of this whole season. <laughs> and I just went back to that moment. It was like, damn, bro, like we got this whole dope ass season and nothing to show for it. And I'm mad, I'm mad, bro. And from where I'm from and the, or the culture that it's like, bro, we fight. Like we gonna have to bump, like real talk. And, and I knew that wasn't the place, right. so I had to walk off to find solitude in the whole situation. Right, right. No, that's good. I just, I thought that was interesting because like, you know, I say at the beginning of the show, it's like, you know, I think a lot of our guys, and I know a lot of guys watch Funky Friday, a lot of guys watch I Am Athlete, and a lot of our guys are struggling bad, bro. Mm-hmm. Bad, we bad, gonna, bad, We gonna, We gonna get into that. But before mm-hmm. we get into that, let's unlock this competitiveness. Brandon Marshall, for the fans that see who remembers more football. The name of the game is Play Call with Brandon Marshall. The game is simple. We must spitfire name offensive and defensive formations. Whoever slows down or stutters first loses. It's me versus you? Mm-hmm. Come on, bro. You're a quarterback, bro. 
This is crazy. When we played, did y'all drop that video yet of a uh, fear poem? That's when I seen your genius. Oh, I can't say that. <laughs> no, 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 say it. I'm like, when you was out there, and then we start talking ball, I was like, oh, sh cause we see the physical cam, but then the your quarterback position is like 80% mental. Mm -hmm. Like, damn, this nigga would like that. So now you about to put me in this position. Okay. Come on. Can okay. I concede? Let like, me concede. And I, I I heard what you said earlier. It's like compete, compete, compete. Mm -hmm. we, I'll okay. try, but this ain't even fair. No, bro. all right. Let's go let's about go. it like this. Let's Three, do a four. Spit, four. Let's, do, let's do a spitfire of you You name the genre. Give me anything that you feel confident about. In, in offense? No, in anything. In if anything. You want to say states. We can do restaurants. We can do... Uh, head okay. coaches, we could do. What am I into right now? We could do uh, NFL teams. What am I into? Let's let's do let's do this. Let's do. This. Let me see. Let me compete. Let me compete. Let me compete. Let's do the the game. Let's do offense and defense. You know it ain't even fair, but go. No, no. Let's go. Let's go. No. I Come on, let's go. That. I want to do it. I, I, I want to test. I, I want to test. Okay. My football IQ. All right. Ready? Yes. Let's go. Twins right. All right, twins right. What we gonna do with twins right? We are gonna put this the Z. Stop up. the cap. All right, stop. No, <laughs> no, it's, hell it's, no. It's, I can't say what. It's we're pretty doing much trips. Twins trip. Yeah, but say that. Don't say. Okay, let me tell you what we gonna do. We gonna do. Yeah, what I'm saying Z X Y. Yeah, that's bro. what I was gonna say. You gonna you gotta tell them when they're. But no, you don't have to tell them that. It's supposed to be twins right. You say trips right. You All see right. What I'm saying? All right, bet. Y'all, y'all got this complex game. <laughs> Fuck. That's him. That's Breland. This complex ass game. You fucking uh uh your brother gave you this game. Yeah, so it's like I say twins right, you say I right. I say Oh, 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 okay, I get it. Go. You that's called a slow blinker. You know what a slow blinker is? No, that's called <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> Yeah, that's what, exactly what a slow blink. All right, but you can do it on the team. You can slow do blinkers and do the team to keep making the same mistake. Like, bro, we gotta cut you, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, go. Twins right. I'm gonna go trips right. All right, I'm gonna go over defense. I'm gonna go under defense. Okay, I'm gonna go all right. I'm gonna go right, right slot. Okay, I'm gonna go near. I'm gonna go nickel. I'm gonna go far. Left slot. Double right. Empty right. Bear defense. I'm going to go 3-4. Three, 3-3. Four. Three, three. I'm going to go 4-2. I'm going to go dime. I'm going to go... I'm getting to mad now. Fuck. I'm going to go. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to go. You're gone. <laughs> I'm going to go. Hold on. I'm going to go quarters. No, it ain't over. I'm going to go quarters. Bro, how many... Uh, I'm going quarters. Uh, what you talking about? That's an edit. It's called post. It's, no, it's not. <laughs> the people don't need to know it's that. Not. See, we keep it funky over here at Funky Friday. You see what I'm saying? I don't know what y'all got going on at night. <laughs> but right here, we don't edit this shit. We just keep rolling. You dig what I'm saying? Dang. That boy said, what do you say? <laughs> Damn, I was thinking about Madden plays. <laughs> got three. I said, I said you three, see what I'm three, saying? but it was really three, three, five. But The oh. same thing. But like, damn, that's what I'm talking about with the quarterback. Like that, we could have went on and on for days. Bit, give me trips right. Tell me, Brandon, you gotta go a slant, see, a see, comeback. Our, our, bit. our like, understanding, and this is the, really the thing. And I always said it about you know, coaches. It's like, bro, coaches, y'all are not dictators. You have to be teachers and understand your student. Yeah. When I had great coaches who understood me, you saw it. 2015 was a perfect example of that. Even my rookie year when I had Rod Chizinski, uh, 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 Mike Shula was was the OC at the time, but 2015 was obviously the best year for me. Me and Coach Shula knew how to communicate with each other. Right. He knew like, you know, this, that, whatever. And then Dorsey, uh, Ken Dorsey, was the quarterback coach. It was, it, it, he knew how to play to my strength. It was like, Coach, if I scramble, do not come back with no damn pass or no quarterback run. I'm tired. Let, give me a play. You see right, what I'm saying? Right. Like that, they would do that early on in my career, and I'm like, yo, I, I had to teach them me. Wow. Yeah, right, right. right? That's good. Things that coaches don't necessarily even understand because he's never had a player like me. Wow. 
So it's like, bro, if I scramble, it don't matter if I scramble for three yards, if I scramble for 33 yards, that following play is going to be a run. Right. And it's for me to catch my breath. If you come back with a all vertical, like, bro, it's going to be inaccurate because I'm tired as hell. <laughs> yeah. Never forget if I got to scramble again. Yeah, right. Coaches don't understand that. They don't know that. They figure that out with Lamar. You right. see, Lamar is just simple. I guarantee you, you will rarely see Lamar Jackson. And this is a statistic that you can probably look up. If Lamar Jackson has a long run or a scramble or even a quarterback run, chances are he's not going to run again. Damn, it take that much out of y'all after that? Bro, I played the game like this. I had to have the endurance of a receiver. I had to have the physicality of a running back. But I had to have the mental telepathy or the understanding as a quarterback. Let me ask you a question. Are you a Hall of Famer? Uh, I don't give a fuck. Answer the question. Cam Newton answered the question. I don't give like or booby. What is it? Booby. What you say? Your alter ego is booby. Boogie. Boogie. B O O G. The number one E. But you got to hold down the E. Boogie. Slide answer to the, the third question. One, Boogie. Then the B. Like boom. <laughs> you really go download. I post my way, and then you can get your own keyboard. E E. <laughs> Bro, you talk about how he be writing. Yeah. That's crazy when I text you that I get a reply with this crazy damn text. Something's wrong with you. It's not. What is it called, <laughs> Peggy? What? I post my way. Yeah, but what is it though? Branding. 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 Not Brandon. It's branding. That's ding, crazy. ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Let me show y'all my Cam Newton text real quick. This is crazy. This boy, because like when we the seen folks this just think years I, I, ago, I, I this is a like lifestyle. It. It's like a lifestyle. I can't show him that text. Let me see. All right, watch this. <laughs> look at this. Tomorrow to discuss. Look at this. I'm talking. Look at this. Look at this. You see this? He really. This is really a lifestyle. Okay, you got it. Oh, all right, bro. Now answer the question. Are you a Hall of Famer? Hell yeah. Okay, thank you. This is Funky Friday. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, All right, go ahead and elaborate because you wanted me to ask that follow up. He went, yeah. No, I, I really oh, didn't, God. but it's like, <laughs> I'll say it like this. Say it. I think it was Kanye who said it. When I first came into the league, it was only one of me. Now, when I look around the league, I see so many me's. Oof. Is that the end of the show? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Anthony Richardson, <laughs> Lamar nah, Jackson, nah, 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 nah. Jalen Hurts. <laughs> That's what we can be coming. Like, bro, like real talk. Like real talk. Bro, don't say nothing else, bro. Like, real talk. Drop the mic, bro. That's it. Okay, cool. And we no go. Bro, we still got. I'm sorry. I don't care. We can keep going, but that right there, that was a whole. <sighs> Kanye said that. Kanye a genius. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Bro, there's so many right, things that I, I want to be respectful to your time, though. Hey, hey I came this, to Atlanta just to see you. But this sector, though, I got to talk about it. I got to talk about it. Oh, my right? God. You guys trying to get messy? No, nah, no Lionel. Uh, that flew over so many people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I am athlete. Right. <clears throat> Take me through the first creation of that. Mm. Okay. Quickly, I talked about this before on my platform. I talked this... Talked about this on uh, my homie's uh, platform before. I just try to sell a show, bro. Mm. My purpose in life is to bridge the gap in the mental health community through like wellness and performance, the stuff that we've been talking about, the stuff that we own, our lifestyle. And in a pandemic, I saw the opportunity. I was watching ESPN. I saw Stephen A. Smith with air, like he had the old school AirPods in with the string. <laughs> I'm like, that shit look terrible. It sound terrible. And I just invested $50,000 into equipment to tell a story so of course. House of Athlete and a social, and a social team. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I also was living in this uh, 17,000 square foot crib and I had toilet paper. Another story. Toilet paper was hard to find, you know, and I had water. I, you know, I was living nicely. It was a vacation. I was on a resort. Mm. <clears throat> but I had these people that was on my team for a couple of years, and, I, and they and I'm like, like believe in me, believe in me. I'm telling y'all, follow me. We gonna build this House of Athlete brand. And then when shit hit the fan, everybody furloughing their 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 staff and, and and firing people. 
I was like, nah, that ain't even where I come from. That ain't even like what I'm cut from. Like, I gotta stand up for my team. Right. And so I was like, how do I keep my team together through this time? And and my vision was, it was like, yo, let me go sell sell a show. Mm-hmm. And so, boom, Channy Crowder came to the crib. And I told the story a few times already. Channy Crowder came to the crib. And, you know, this was like the time where we start feeling comfortable letting people, the being around people. Right. And we had a little birthday party. And that, that was like the only family that we invited, right? Like Channy and I always been kind of close to our wives. And, you know, from, so, from your Miami days, did y'all? From mean? Miami days. But even like when we had the twins, they flew to Chicago, like coming to the baby shower. Like they always supported us. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like Channy was dope, was one of my favorite teammates. And so <clears throat> we're sitting there and just like how you and I are sitting in my driveway, and the kids out there on the scooters and bikes and running around. I'm like, yo, bro, you fire, you dope. Would you do a podcast with me? It's like, shit, bro, I'll do a podcast with you. And so I was like, okay, cool, say no more. <clears throat> the next day I jump in my golf cart, you know, and I drive over to Fred Taylor's house. Like, this is like the star island of Fort Lauderdale, Broward County. Like, the rock lives behind me. Fred Taylor, Reggie Wayne. You're having so um, many subtle, we get it. You got yeah, money. Yeah, I'm, I told you, I'm a little, I'm borderline cocky today. Okay? So, boom, I jump in the golf cart. I b- go over to Fred T's house. This got a shirt off in the driveway. You know, everybody's doing their fitness thing during that time. He doing bands or whatever. I'm like, yo, bro, would you do a podcast? Like, yeah, I, I rock with you. I rock with you. Boom. I'm like, you think Reggie Wayne would do a podcast? Reggie Wayne, they, his house was considered the castle in the neighborhood. Mm. Big house. And <clears throat> he's like, yeah, Reggie, Reg, like, let's go holler at him. So then boom, I, I'll pull up on Reggie. Reggie. Boom, say no more. In the first season, what I, what I, how I sat down with everybody's like, look, guys, like, I don't know nothing about this space, but we can sell this show. Showtime come along at ESPN. And I, I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. If they come along, then that time will determine what's going on with us in our business. Like, but the way I'm approaching it, 25, 25, 25, 25, basically. Mm-hmm. Cool. So that's like the 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 first iteration of I am athlete. We go through season one. This is the inception creation from gen- this is the genesis. That's right. I'm trying to sell it. Mm-hmm. But remember what I told him, I'm trying to sell a social. I'm coming back. I'm reporting back like every couple weeks. Yo, I talked to Showtime. I talked to uh, Raw Report. I talked to this people. I talked to that people. These people. And at the same time, remember the pandemic, a lot of our artists, a black artist was talking about owning your IP and mm-hmm. talking about your publishing, blah, 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 blah. And so I'm getting these conversations. I never forget the guy, the founder, the the CEO of Raw Report, he's like, I love this. I'll give you guys whatever you want. And he's like, but we need to own 51% of your IP. That's what I got into the game for. Like, man, I'm just trying to sell this. I don't care nothing about this. But it just didn't sit right with me. So I passed on the deal. They're not in these meetings. Mm-hmm. They're coming, they're coming twice. We got a month. We're shooting six hours out of a month. So we'll come f- the first two weeks of the month. We'll do two shows, it's about three hours, depending on how long it takes. And then we'll come back another two weeks. Boom. But every day I'm working this process. But you're saying they are not a part of the process. Was that because of them not wanting to be a part of the process or are you sheltering them outside of this process? Well, I think like, I didn't even thinking about that, thinking about that way. Like this was like, it was like an idea that I had. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I pitched it to them. They said, no problem. And no, you know how we are with teammates and stuff. It's like, you know, even when we were playing, we would have like a, a, a charity event or whatever. I always felt uncomfortable asking dudes for their time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was like, it was a blessing just to get them dudes to show up for free for six months out of the month, mm-hmm. six hours out of the month, right? So I... To me, their commit was just the six six hours, and I would just report back. They had other things going on. Like this was my full time job. Okay. <laughs> now, are you getting compensated at all throughout this process? I still haven't taken any money. I'm in the red. I'm in the negative twelve million dollars. Like to this day, like 
I still haven't been paid anything. Everybody else have ate, ate and eaten well off of this platform. Mm. Like, nigga, when I, when, when I talk about being in the valley and all of that, like, and I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Cause like, to me, I still envisualize being on that second mountain at the top. Like, damn, Barstool just completed herself for 640 million. Uninterrupted sitting on a $740 million valuation. Joe Rogan did what with Spotify? 300 million? The Ringer, 250 million? Pat McAfee did what? That's what keeps me going. I already felt that, bro. Like, I slept. Remember what I said, Wesley Chapel, we was eight of us you in been, a two you, bedroom. You, you, so you I'm been a scene. Uh, I, You've been, I, been I, out of eye with your demon. Like, you, you, you comfortable with being comfortable, or uncomfortable, so to speak. It, that's not Roly, Rolex. Maybach. What's that? Flying the inter- mm-hmm. That's just nothing. We did that. We did that. Cam, can I now? Cam, I need you in Florida. I need you in Miami, bro. We about to go do this live. Boom, boom, boom. I'm sending the PJ. That's different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can, you know, here's my hitch. 2014, I spent my whole offseason at Harvard building out this case study on transition. Mm-hmm. Content and commerce came out of it. Okay, so for me, the way I looked at it was, the way I looked at it was like, look, bro, like, I see the opportunity and what I can create and, you know, making $100 million in a career, like, I've done that, I did that, like, I have an opportunity to do much greater and much more. So, like, that's what I'm on now. This doesn't, this does nothing for me a watch, a car, or whatever. As long as my kids and my wife is good, I, I'm comfortable. I can sleep right here tonight. You can't. Why not? Uh, because the way the knees set up, they said this nigga was crazy. <laughs> I'm believing it. Let me unbutton this. <laughs> Go ahead. But, but Take these Tiffany's off. Sutterflex. But throughout this whole time, though, right? Because I only can be funky with you, right? There's been people to say, Brandon don't do good business. Mm-hmm. There's people that also say, n- n- no funny shit, Brandon's crazy. Mm-hmm. There's been also people that says, he battles with multiple personality disorder. It's like one day he's good, the next day don't talk to him. There's also been people that says, Brandon can't get out of Brandon's way. Mm -hmm. He's a narcissist. mm, Keep going. There's this whole Mm -hmm. thing, right? Mm -hmm. That even for me at times, I've questioned. I said, yo, like, if we're keeping it funky, I ain't never seen that. You know what I'm saying? Like me, like I, I talk to, I talk to Channing, mm-hmm. right? I talk to Fred and they voice their opinion. I talk to business people that we both know, mm-hmm. right? And some of what they said was true. And when I say, I'm not speaking about one specific person. Some of it they said is true, but some of it, it made me say like, that's discretionary and you're, you're entitled to feel how you feel. Right? That's right. But through it all, like, didn't they say the same thing about Steve Jobs? No, no, no. That ain't where I want to go with this. Okay, let's go. Keep going. What I want to tell you is, how in the fuck do you allow a person to come into your life and make a positive impact on your life? And now, if I were to tell you, hey, dog, I got somebody about to come in here right now, and... That emotion is negative, it's angry, it's like, no, nah, bro, it's, it's on sight. Mm-hmm. How? You just told me this man was at your twins. Channing. Yes. All right, so look, like, bro, like, this is what you gotta, this is what we have to understand. <clears throat> One, I'm crazy about my business. I'm crazy about my dreams. Mm-hmm. And I stand on what I stand on. Fred Taylor, I can understand how you feel. You know why I can understand how you feel? 
is because when Chan when Fred Taylor sit down with me, damn, I talked about like I really don't want to talk about this anymore. When Fred Taylor sit down with me, right, and like you live and you learn, and he don't put up any money, but he say he want to put up money, but he don't after a year, and my investment goes to five hundred to a million dollars, and it keeps rising. And now he's asking for 25 percent in the company, and I'm like, bro, that just don't make sense to me. Okay, now stop. Okay, keep your point. Have you ever received any money from Fred Taylor, Reggie Wayne, Channing, uh, Channing Crowder? No, I've paid them. Okay, now looking from it from your side, mm -hmm. right? Keeping it funky. They feel, I would feel if I were them, I would say, even though I never put a dime in, but I helped grow this entity mm -hmm. to what it is. I'm not owed 25%? No. Why? You're not owed 25% because I sat down from the beginning and I said, all right, Here's the opportunity. I hire a lawyer, put it on paper. After the first season, boom, here y'all go. I advise y'all to do y'all same research that I did. I know nothing about this production world. This is what WME told me, okay? This is, why I, this is how I should shake out. But y'all make sure y'all feel good about this. I just talked to uh, Showtime. Showtime said, we love you. We've been working with you for seven years. I don't believe in Fred Taylor. I don't know who Channing Crowder is. And Reggie Wayne, is, he's cool. But like, we can build this around you. Let's bring in maybe Reggie Bush. That's not what I sold them. I'm sorry, I got to pass. You passed up an opportunity. Steve, call Steven Espinosa, president of Showtime Sports. Nah, I can't do that. Raw report, 51% can't do it. So, boom, I'm having these conversations. That's what I was saying earlier. They're showing up six hours out of a month. I'm working this every single day. I'm five in the morning, sleeping in the facility, sleeping in the office. Okay. Hold on, let me finish. So, boom, we're working through it. After season one, Ocho comes on the very last episode. We break through, pop, pop. So after that, I come, I say, look, I'm not selling. What I told y'all before, I learned a lot. I'm going to continue. I believe, right? But I can't ask y'all to come back for nothing. What I can afford, Brandon Marshall, because there's no money coming in. I don't even know what YouTube is. Y'all can take a per episode fee. Here's the opportunity here. Some people $1,500, some people $2,500 to $3,500 per episode, right? Depending on like Ocho's more valuable than a Channing Crowder, okay? Or you can invest. Everybody said no but besides Fred Taylor, okay? Fred Taylor comes back a year later when it pops through and then me and him, the only one having these type of conversations, right? I'm like, bro, like I can't give you 25% of the company you know, because initially we're talking about a $25,000 investment and, you know, breaking it down evenly, blah, 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 blah. Now, like, I went full throttle with trademarking, attorneys, uh, merchandise. You know, we fly to Charlotte. I did a deal with NASCAR. I'm, I'm, not, I'm paying for the flights. I'm paying for the rooms. I'm paying for the food. Everything is expensed on Brandon Marshall. So now the investment increased by 10 times. Right. Because the company is growing. Right. The so like now. The valuation of the company is growing. Correct. So now let's revisit that. What's the fear deal? He and I could never agree to that. Channing and I, that's the one that hurts, right? Because of what you said. Right? We in Charlotte. We in your backyard. Bro, we flying there, this and that. Boom. Bro, like, what we got to do? I, we sent over the paperwork. I, I got the attorney. They, what, what we. 
we read, bro, read, read mark whatever you want. I don't care about that. No, let's let's reverse. Let's back. Let's let's backtrack. What I'm realizing in this space is <clears throat> when you talk about it, because I've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Not everybody under, not everybody get it or see it. No, I, it, but I'm gonna let you finish too. I'm coming from. I had already. I don't talk to a lot of people about this. Correct. So, so my 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 validation is a little different. I don't know who you talk to. Respectfully, could care less. But I know. First off, if it's not ending in a good thing, I would have never brought it up. That's right. Cause cause I went on the pivot, right? That's right. And I told him. I said, bro, fix this shit. I don't give a fuck what y'all got to do. Fix it. Right. So to your point, we're gonna get to that point. But so. so um, we, there were so many things I was doing. So initially when I sat down with them, I said, look, Reggie Wayne, he likes cigars just like you and cars, fucking fleet of old school cars. He got garages and storage around America, it feels like with just some crazy whips, old school cars. I go to the Lamb Broward Lamborghini dealership. I scope the garage out. I'm like, yo, this would be dope. And what I envisioned and it was just a vision that I had because The Rock was like, we shared kind of like a backyard, mm -hmm. right? Like The Rock, The Rock, The Rock back there, right? And so I'm like, that would be dope if the garage opened up, Reggie Wayne pulls in his fucking 64 Mustang, and I'm just throwing a name out there. I don't even know if he owns a 64 Mustang. He has so many old school whips. And then A Rock pulls up in his fucking three F350 into this garage. And now you have these cars on the lifts, and then they have this little rotating uh, little thing where the cars kind of rotate. Mm -hmm. And they that's the set where they sit down. They share a stogie, maybe some whiskey, and they have a conversation. So I pitched Reggie Wayne, I was like, yo bro, like that's cigars and cars. This is I Am Athlete, we gonna morph into a platform. That's your show, you own that. We rev share it if I can go sell it, boom. Right, bring that to the platform. Why? Because now, if we look up three, five years from now, and we have five, six shows, all hits, this could potentially be the next bar store. This could potentially be the next uninterrupted. This could potentially be the next Players Tribune. Mm -hmm. Right, Channing Crowder, bro. You like hunting. You like you a weird ass guy. You like outdoors shit. You want to wrestle gators. You could be the next Anthony Bourdain. You could be the next. Something in the wild. Alligator hunter. Right, facts. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Fred Taylor, this was the joke. We don't know what you do, what you want to do. Like Fred was just like living retired, it's, like it's smooth. Yeah. But he, he in the money, he's in the finance. Well, let's figure it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was the inside joke. Okay, so that was the initial conversation. Yeah. But what I'm seeing is this. But so so we get to it, right? And Channing Crowder, right? Because I go to Charlotte when I was talking about in your backyard. It's like I go to him. We have all these opportunities. We're rolling NASCAR, NASCAR rolling out the red carpet, do whatever. About the name Mishi, executive, uh, creative director of this and that. Blah blah blah. We're about the mo multiple shows. Boom boom boom. So we walking around, we're flying to Charlotte like a couple of times, you know, once a month almost during this phase. And I'm like, bro, what does it take? Like, I know me and you can build this platform. What do you need to come rock with me full time? B, throw me 250,000 and some benefits. I'm not an entrepreneur. I don't take risks. That's on you. I salute you for that. But throw me this, and I'm with you. That's what Channing said. Say no more. Say no more. I come back six months later. <clears throat> I do a deal with Sir SiriusXM. I'm like, Channing, this is your show. The show that I'm doing called Paper Route. I'm doing it. I, I never intended it to be on Paper Route. I'm trying to be off camera behind the scenes, willing and dealing and putting all this together. I said, bro, you can, I said, cause like Channing is so natural. Mm -hmm. Channing is he, like- He one of them, he, he remind me of like a cousin or a person like at the barbershop that knows a lot and he can say, bruh, 
all right, come on now. Like, you know, Channing. and he could challenge, he challenges the yeah, status but, quo. But, but Channing is very, very talented. Mm -hmm. But Channing, and I don't know where he's at now because I haven't been around him in almost a year and a half. But what I see is like, are you mastering your craft? Right? Like you showing up the last 10 years doing radio, just showing up 20 minutes before and just talking just to talk. Mm -hmm. That's your natural ability. But you can be the next Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's making a million dollars an episode. Mm -hmm. I said, bro, like, here go 400,000 in the first year. And if you do what you're supposed to, this is the conversation that we having. All the shit, teeth getting done, all of that. Like, bro, like, dog, like, your teeth. I, I've been on that shit talking about that. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, like, even your t-shirts, keep your same swag. Don't change that That's shit image. up. That's your brand. That's your brand, but, like, let's change this up. Boom, boom, boom. You, if you do what you're supposed to do, and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do behind the scenes, you'll be at a million dollars next year. I just did a five-day-a-week show with FS1. First things first. I walked away from that gig. They was paying me $870,000 a year. The Showtime gig that I did for 10 years, they was paying me $1.3 million a year for 26 episodes, flying up there just on Tuesdays. I said, bro, year two of I Am Athlete, you can be making a million dollars. You making, you told me what the, you told me what the, what, what you, what you needed. Mm -hmm. I come back, bring back more through I Am Athlete, I Am NASCAR, and the five day a week show with Sirius XM. Well, what about this? What about that? Bro, this is the same contract that I signed on Showtime. This is the same contract I showed on FS1. We're building on the platform. Well, what happens if I'm not here in three to four years? Bro, like, this is I Am Athlete, this is the IP. I'm putting you, you can have a piece of the upside, advisory board, or you can invest. I'm actually raising capital right now. So <clears throat> what I would say is this. Channing Crowder, super talented. Fred Taylor. I don't have anything good to say about Fred Taylor. No, don't say that. Um, don't say that, bro. Well, I, all right, cool. Let me say it this way. like, Because like, I, Fred Taylor, the, disappointing, the disappointment there is that Damn, boy, you funky Friday, you got me open. Dog, I'm not supposed to be talking about this no nah, more. bro, but I'm, I'm, I'm being like this. So, is... so Fred Taylor, we talking about solid OGs. Mm -hmm. That was my neighbor for 10 years, solid. You know what I mean? So that's the disappointment there. It's like, he's so solid. You know what I mean? And so you got that. And then Ryan Clark. Okay, so um, they are super talented, and we came together on a vision, and when it came to it, they saw an opportunity where they can make more money doing what they're doing, taking a blueprint and doing what they're doing, and they're doing a phenomenal job. Yeah. You know, like ideally, like what I, the vision that I had when I talked about cigars and cars and Channing Crowder's outdoor show, whatever, whatever it was, that, the pivot was supposed to be there. Like Ryan Clark, why I did this to Ryan Clark like that, for a year I was talking to Ryan Clark about his podcast that he's no really, he doesn't have time to do that no more because he's he got a lot of motion. He's doing a lot of things right now. Mm -hmm. But he had a podcast and I'm like, yo, bro, that could be on I Am Athlete. Do you own that or do ESPN own that? I own that. He was thinking about even opening up House of Athlete in Arizona, right? So we're having these conversations for a year. When I got the announcement, I heard the announcement that, you know, they're going to go left and doing a pivot. Ryan Clark called me 10 minutes later like, yo, bro, you know, I never told this part of the story, but like, yo, bro, I've been praying about this. My wife said this and that because our relationship, but like, I try to stay out of it, but I'm going to go do this with the pivot, blah, 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 blah. But for a year, I'm hitting you up like, yo, bro, like, bring your podcast to I Am Athlete. You coming to me about taking House of Athlete to Arizona, to Phoenix. I put you on I Am Athlete, right? Not saying that Ryan Clark is Ryan Clark, right? So I'm not saying like I started, you know what I mean? He, I think he's talented, a um, little corny, but talented. Um, 
Bro, you said it's Funky Friday, bro. Keep it, keep it funky. Okay, but I but, cut that. Maybe not. No, we're not gonna cut it. We're gonna keep it running. Okay. But this is this is what I want to say. All right. Am I doing too much? <laughs> no, 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 no. I think there's a bitterness, and I don't like it. Just keep. I'm just. Well, here's what I'm saying. This is what I would say to you about this. I feel like you hurt. As you oh, should. for sure. Okay. For sure. Like, it's not even that I'm hurt because I'm a win regardless. What's for me is what for, is what for is what's for me, and what's for them is what's for them. You know. But it's just like because when you talked about like the narrative, when we go back to football, to how we open up the conversation, we open up the conversation. I channeled my inner Jay Z about the 21 catches. So what I actually did is I looked at rap beef. And I'm like, how did the best of the best channel that? Because I'm in conversations with Sirius XM. I'm sitting at the table with the Pepsi Cos, the Uber Eats, the Mobile Ones, the Diageos, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna go out there and get in some podcast back and forth. That's gonna ruin the business. Mm -hmm. So while they're going out there for a year and a half, controlling the narrative talking, I'm sitting silent. So they're creating the narrative around this. I'm not saying that I did everything right and everything perfect. There's a lot of key learnings for me, for sure. But when you talk about bad business, then the question I ask is like, were you paid? What we agreed on, what we talked about, were you paid? Yes. Well, every, pers every person that has ever done business with Brandon Marshall, have they been compensated? Absolutely, 100%. Okay, now what I would say to this is this. No, but, but here, hold on, here's the, here's the discrepancy, and this is what they're sitting on is, so when we're sitting down with Fred Taylor and the production team, right? The production team, I gave them an opportunity, all right? I gave Alicia an opportunity, I was like, look, I just don't wanna do I Am Athlete. Right, this is all my vision. This is my company, right? So I'm like, I, I there was I am Women, there was I am NASCAR, there was our Daily Show, there was our Path to the Draft Show, all these things. I was like, I need somebody in this position full time, right? You got a lot of motion. You doing a lot of things. Okay. Are you willing to give up that to come over here? I understand if you don't. No. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go hire somebody to do that. We're gonna go our separate ways. So the initial, who is this? This is their production. Alicia. Their, yeah, okay. this is their, their producer. Okay. okay. So they go their separate ways. So when we initially talk about, okay, well, look, we agreed on is when we start making money, you'll get 25%. This came from WME. When I go back to WME, the structure, blah, 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 guys, study on this. I'm going to do this with this production company so it'll be more efficient and affordable mm -hmm. for us to go. You'll get 25, well, Rav share 25%. She walked away before there was any money coming in. So her suggestion was, give me $1.8 million and 10% uh, in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. Come on. That, that was her suggestion. It came down to $800,000 before I hung up the phone. I said, I'm not having these conversations. I'll see you in court or whatever, right? So I say that because when you talk about money, Channing Crowder paid in full, Fred Taylor paid in full, Ch uh, Ocho Cinco paid in full, this person paid in full, that person paid in full. Alicia now, she's like, well, I created this and that. Well, you walked away, right? And then the paper that we... Actually, because Fred was like, hey, I, want, I need to understand where all the money's at and this and that. He said, I need $300,000. If I was actually getting paid in full, it's $300,000. Okay? So where did $1.8 million come from? Where did, eight, where did 800000 come from? When you, write that, when you wrote down that if you, if you were actually, if you didn't do the rev share deal, mm -hmm. Okay, if you didn't do the rev share deal, that you would actually probably been compensated an extra, an extra, because I already paid about $400,000 one season. $300,000 more. So how we get to 1.8 and then- So you were just looking for an itemized 
receipt of how did we get to this point from the party? I wasn't looking for anything. I know my numbers. Yeah, but, but, but when you're saying you're trying to give a rev share, that's one. Right. But then they come back and they say, yo, I want 1.8 and whatever that 800 it's not number. It's It's her. It's her. Okay, cool. Production company. Boom. And you're saying they or she left before we could even. Hey, Alicia, look, I love working with you. You know what I mean? I know the last year has been tough. We've been rolling. You know, we did I Am Athlete. I brought you in initially just to do I Am Athlete. We agreed to this 25% of rev share, and I just paid costs. So we were paying $5,000 to $7,500 per episode to shoot I Am Athlete. But then we struck a deal with NASCAR. Then we launched I Am Woman. We did a little series of I Am Black, right? We did a Path to the Draft show, right? We thought we were going to get 800000 but we fumbled, and it wasn't, we fumbled, and we actually pitched Fox on a $100,000 budget. So we did that, and we also did a combine when the NFL, remember the NFL didn't have combine. We did combine, mm. and we broadcast that live. That cost me out of my pocket $100,000. So we did all of these things. So I'm like, yo, I love working with you, but this shit's been hard over the last year, right? So many challenges in the middle of a pandemic. I need you full time. Oh, she wasn't full time? No, it was her production company. I need you full time now. I'm building this company. Yeah. I'm trying to build so, the next. So, so Alicia was not full time? Was she getting compensated? That's my question. 5,500 to about 7,500 per episode with a rev share. Before any money came okay, in, I got you. there was no, sure. right? You. She couldn't rev share. Yeah. So before she could rev share, she said, you know what? I'm going to go my own way. Yes, I got you. So the return, the result of that was, all right, well, because we're going our own way, give me $1.8 million. In, in essence, and, that's, that's and, restitution. And, and I think she might have said it was either 8% or 10% of, like, of equity in perpetuity of the company. Yeah, that's One season. So that's where, you know, the beef is, right? And there's a lot of things happening behind the scene. Um, and I don't say much because like, and I, I, I even, I'm, it's, it's, it sucks that I'm having this conversation with you, but it is Funky Friday. But I shouldn't be having this conversation with you right now um, because I, I don't believe we should be having these conversations publicly. They choose to have these conversations publicly, which then dictates the narrative. Yeah. Right? But what I'm going to tell you is this, and this is my whole point. Were you wrong for having a business uh, entrepreneurial attitude and, and perspective to this? No, you wasn't. What I think the disconnect was and is, is that Brandon in some ways gatekeeped us from being a part of what he was building. Now, to your point, I hear you loud and clear, like bro, I'm investing my money. I'm coming up with my ideas. I'm letting you guys know as much as you guys are di are di able to digest what I'm trying to tell you. But if the if the conversation was more like, "Yo, even if it's even if it's not with I am athlete, right? Or my production company. Let me help you create your own." All right, so, right. so hold on, no, 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 let me tell you this. So first, again, I want to reiterate that I think Channing Crowder is super talented, and I told him this to his face, that he could be the next Joe Rogan. He can represent the culture there. So I'm super excited about what he's doing. Ocho's always been him. Yeah. He's a pioneer. When we talk about, you t call me a pioneer, he's a pioneer when it comes to digital. And he and our relationship is good uh, from a personal standpoint. You know, it's, it, you know, so like there's no beef there, no nothing there. 
Fred Taylor, definitely disappointed. Ryan Clark, definitely disappointed. So there is mixed emotions, okay? But I think they're super talented. They deserve everything that they, they have. They have a great show, and, bro. And, and, they and, have and it's the, working. The production that, that, that they're doing, it's a, it's a great show. They're doing, and, they're, doing, they're doing a good job. And so I say all that to say, say this is I invested $300,000 in my five-year roadmap. Boston Consulting Group is the number two consulting firm in the world when it comes to, you know, helping businesses at all levels build out whatever they need. For me, I couldn't tell the financial story, right? Because when I first started this, House of Athlete took off, I Am Athlete took off, and at Elysian Park Venture, so the Dodgers are the biggest investors behind us, WME and, and, and the Dodgers. They reached out to me and they said, you know what, we love what you're doing, we want to invest. So at the time, I was getting uh, um, executive coaching from a partner at BCG. And he said, listen, you can go over here because there was a few agencies like, hey, we want to invest 10 million. We want to do this. You can do that or, you know, you can go down this venture world, but you're not going to be able to tell the financial story. And you're either going to mess up the deal or you're going to get taken advantage of. So what I advise you to do is really say no and put together the plan. And it's going to cost you $300,000. I chose to do that. And when I did that, I then presented the plan to everyone. And so like Channing looked at me respectfully and I don't feel any way. Like I, that's what I love about Channing. He's always real. That's why he's good on okay. in front of the camera because that's who you get is vulnerable and it's authentic. Mm -hmm. And so he looks at me, he's like, I don't believe in this. I don't believe in this. I don't want no part of that. I just want to do the podcast. And I'm like, well, respectfully, bro, like, you know, the company that I'm building is this, right? And so that's where he and I didn't mesh and we didn't see eye to eye. It's like, I want to do multiple shows. I do believe in brick and mortar. I do believe in studio. So it was a, a more of an alignment issue there. Okay. So when you talk about like plan and helping out, I presented, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. We all can invest, right? You guys invest in other companies. You guys are doing other things. We can do that here. And that just didn't align for what they wanted to do. Yeah. And I could, I, I just, and I'm moving on from it. Bro, this rage of this, this energy of like, bro, they're doing some good shit. 100%. Right? You're doing some good shit. Right. I started Funky Friday because I saw what you did with I Am Athlete. Right. I am also inspired by what I see on the pivot. Mm -hmm. I'm also inspired by what I see on all the smoke. That's right. I'm also inspired by what I see on- The uh, shop. The shop, right? Or uh, who's killing it right now? My guy. Kelsey, Pat Beverly. Uh, the Heights. There's so many. Uh, all that, and uh, uh, it is what it is. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's so many different things that, I, that you can draw inspiration from. And for you to be such a businessman, smart businessman at that, mm -hmm. you nuke all that by being affected by what they're doing. Because in my opinion, Brandon, yep. the business side of that, how you explained it, it's like, bro, I tried to bring y'all in. Y'all wasn't trying to fuck with it. You right. see what I'm saying? I see that. And I'm like, yo, bro, like I, but I also can empathize with Fred T. I also can empathize with Channing and just everything else. So you had a conversation with him, right? Yes, sir. So you say you can empathize with him. Mm -hmm. So what part of uh, Fred Taylor's story and Channing Crowder's story do you understand and do you get? I feel like they were a part of building I Am Athlete to relevance. Okay. You know, 100%. so for what it's worth, I do think compensation is needed. How much? That is something that is contingent that y'all, that's the question that you guys should have had. If I was Fred T, if I was Channing, I was like, hey, yo, bro, like, let's keep it a buck. Like, okay, cool. You don't want to, if, if I don't want to bring no money in, but bro, I would have came at you on this. We started at this date. <clears throat> we took off at this date. 
it was off of the efforts of not only just you, mm -hmm. but me too. That's right. Right? 100%. And let's go by the numbers and let the numbers dictate. Mm -hmm. If it says I'm worth 25%, give me 25%. Mm -hmm. If it, but you would say, but if it's worth 3%, I'm going to give you 3%. Is that a deal? Cool. Boom, boom, boom. That's how all the emotional shit would have been taken care of. Mm -hmm. You have not, so you said three names, Cam Newton, Deion Sanders, Rick Ross. And so many others, Dwayne Wade, um, so many others. Yeah, the whole season too, and, our breakthrough year. And, and you, were not, you were not even able to be compensated for that. Well, we were for a couple of months, and then, you know, obviously- It got they, flat. It's, they okay. start, uh, but, Alicia and the production company start flagging the channel. But this is what I would say to this. And this is where the adult comes out of me. The businessman comes out of me. Y'all did more harm emotionally than help financially. Because if Alicia, Brandon are able to, okay, cool. I believe in fairness, right? Fuck egos, fuck all that other stuff. Nobody's winning now. I wouldn't say that. No, no, I'm talking about with this past content. Nobody, nobody's winning. Right. Right. Well, well, and, well, you know what? Let me, let me, I, I, I disagree. I think that the way uh, some may view it is, I don't view it this way. Because remember, the, what I stood on and what I pitched from day one was, it's un unity and do it together. Yeah. Built one entity and we could potentially be sitting on a billion dollar valuation, right? In but five to seven years. Yo, so, but, so but, that's but, but, you, Brandon. I, I, I know that is me, you. but what I'm saying is now it's about competition for some, right? So, so some are looking at it like, well, if this person's losing and if I'm winning or vice versa, then that's the name of the game. But that's where we lose, right? Like, I think all of us, we should all control our own IP, own our IP, but we should be collectively as athletes sitting down working together. The same shit that we be talking about and doing. Mm -hmm. Yo, like, all right, I'll come over here, repost this, cross-pollinate cross uh, and promote, do this, boom, boom, boom. That's how we all should be thinking. But, but I'm going to get to that, but to, to, to close this out, what I mean, nobody's winning right now. Because that was beautiful content. That's golden content. Yeah. And you can't post it because of her. She's not going to post it because of you. And this is something that just requires a big boy, big girl conversation. Well, and that's all I'm. Well, here's the thing. We can we can we can agree to disagree. No, no, I agree with you. But here's the, here's what I would say to you on that. I own the content. That's my content. Hold on, listen to me. It's about what. Battles and wars. I'm trying to win a war here. Okay. Hold on, listen but to me. Hold I have on, to also give I, you perspective. I, I, make I, your I, point I, so, I can okay. make, so I can give you perspective. And what I mean by that is, if taking down that content for a season, and I'm talking about this season that I'm in right now, right, is going to keep me from my channel getting flagged. Because my number one form of distribution is YouTube, and then the second form is SiriusXM, is radio. So... If I take that down so they don't continue to flag my channel, right, until I'm in a position to go then where I have time to sit down and, and have the capacity to go to war and fight that out and show, like, that I, this was paid, that was paid, blah, 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 blah. Like, it's okay. So that content is owned by me, and it will be back up in the future. But right now, I don't even have the capacity and time to sit down and fight over a Cam Newton episode, a Deion Sanders episode. I just don't have it. So it makes sense for me right now because, like when I said, like this is the toughest time to be an entrepreneur, the second toughest time in the, in the history of the world to be an entrepreneur. You, you think, I got 90 employees, and for, every 90, and for every 90 people on my team, we're also responsible for two to three, okay? You think I got time to be battling with them in court and this and that? 
Okay. I don't have time. Just make it. Just make your final verdict on this topic, and I'm gonna make my final verdict, and we're gonna move on. Okay. And then keep going. So my final verdict is this. I'm extremely proud of Channing Crowder. I'm extremely proud of, like Ocho is like he's in the middle. I love Ocho. You know, and that's one of the things like Ocho when he when we were having this conversation, you know, I was like, man, is there anything we can do to work it out? I was like, but I don't think so. It's uncomfortable. It was an uncomfortable position for him. Now he's doing some amazing things. Ocho was has always been him, right? Um, I'm disappointed in Fred, but Fred, I always looked up to Fred. Solid, you know. Um, Ryan Clark disappointed, you know, but he's having a phenomenal uh, like run right now, sprint because it, it comes in abs and flows, and I think he's having a he's doing a really good job. Um, and <clears throat> it is what it is, bro. Like, you know, I think, you know, people always say to me, you know, what, what can happen in the future? Can y'all come back together? Would y'all sit down? Like where I'm at right now, I'm just focused on me, you know, learning from the past, correcting my mistakes so I don't make the same mistakes in the future. And I know we built a brand and that's the beautiful thing. And that's the difference. And that's what I Am Athlete is. When you build a brand, a brand sustains the test of time. I'm not here for just fucking just one little episode or this and that. We've created an experience. We've created a brand. And there's millions of athletes. Okay. You see, I didn't interrupt you. Okay, I won't interrupt you. <laughs> you Please you set me up. Why you ain't go first? Because I'm you about to the drop the mic. Word. No, I'm about to just drop the mic because I really want to go to something else. And I can't respond. It's over with for you. It's over. <laughs> you said something. You said something in regards to you own the content. Yeah. You do. But people help me out. Process. Process. Product. Product. There were people. <laughs> a part of your process that helped you build the product. I can't answer the question you told me I can't speak. You can't. And that's all I'm saying. When I, when I make a statement, nobody's winning right now. Because at some, per, some particular point in time, you felt a way, you felt that that person was talented without a backhand compliment. You felt that this person was this without saying, but it, they are. And to my point, to just this whole thing, I'm going to give you a real life example. It really came out of the news today or around this time. Pat McAfee, right? I seen a dope ass clip of him when he said, it is true. I did compensate Aaron Rodgers. I think he said upwards of $400,000. The, the media has said it was a million dollars. And his reasoning behind it is, if you want to crucify me for giving somebody a token of appreciation, whether they need it or not, yeah. this is just my way of saying, hey, this is whether you spend it on cars, clothes, boats and hoes, and strippers and cocaine, who gives a damn? I, that's going to definitely get cut out. But... You get what I'm saying? You gonna cut yours out, but you can't cut mine's out? It's my show. <laughs> uh, Keep that in. <laughs> but my thing is, he helps people who helps the show. That's right. I'm not saying that you don't help people or haven't compensated people for building the empire of I Am Athlete. What I am saying is the boss in you deserves more peace than what you have now. That's right. And that's all I that's all I want. Because I've heard conversation with this person, I heard this person and that person, and I heard conversation with this person, I heard that and it's up to me to have my own thing. Right. And I say Brandon ain't never crossed me. Mm -hmm. And but Brandon tried to bring me on I am athlete. I respectfully decline mm -hmm. because even for you, you taught me too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, I know too much, Brandon. Like, I, I, 
Iconic Saga go is going to have to be a part of a joint venture. That's right. It's not going to be under the umbrella of I Am Athlete. That's not to say that somebody made a mistake. That's not to say that somebody didn't necessarily know that they were very green about the situation. It was me basically saying, I'm building a brand too. So, so, can, so can, I, can I butt in right here? I know you told me I can't. And we, this probably won't make it, but it will make it for our announcement. No, we're not there yet. It, this is just a cut. This is going to be a cut. No? Yes, please. No. No? No, just be cultured. Okay. I know that's so hard for you okay. to do. <laughs> All right? I just, so can we, been, can we just change this? Can, do you understand? I thought it would have been a beautiful cut for us to, like, like another clip that we can roll out later as no, BTS. No, no, no. Because okay, I'm, go. man, I got to, okay, and I'm go. saying this to Troy. I got to respect Troy because okay. everybody's doing overtime right now. But I like where I'm. Um, Stay there. I'm, I'm driving this car, bro. Stay there. I already know how you feel. You I've, feel been, me? I've, been, I've been in that position. Right now. Okay. I'm going to give you these words and I want you to go there with me. You ready? Yep. Prime 112. Mm hmm. Take me there. Prime 112. I was nervous to come out because I'm in this phase in my life right now where, so you, I, get a, I get a text from you. And uh, here come the tears now. Like, you finally brought that shit out. So I get a text, and you're like, yo, bro, I'm in town. You were at American Heritage, the game of the week. And 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 I'm like, damn. Like I, We connect in intimate spaces. Yeah. But I didn't know what you was going to be on. Like, I never, like, yo, you're in Miami. Like, what you thinking? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, I don't want to go be on nothing dumb and reckless. Mm -hmm. Cause we never been in that type of space before. Mm -hmm. And I'm in this very sacred space right now. And so I pull up because it's you. And bro, that's one of the most beautiful conversations we ever had. You pulled up at what time? I pulled up late. It was probably like 10, 30, 11. What time did you leave? We ain't leave till 4.30 in the morning outside. They shut down the restaurant mm -hmm. and we had to move outside. On the sidewalk. On the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And we having this beautiful conversation amongst men. Yeah. And it was like, that was the conversation I needed, right? We're, we're, the things that we were talking about, right? Because I know, like, you know, I'm so impressionable right now. Like, I'm just, I'm just in this space. It's hard for me to define the space I'm in. And it was like, yo, me and bro is so in line. And my brothers, all, oh, everybody was sitting there. It was like, whew. This is what I needed. I, I, I remember if I had to title, if I had to, to title that for you, mm -hmm. that was the emancipation of Brandon understanding that he has to go on the journey to find Brandon. Mm. It's the beginning of that. Yes. Where it's like sitting with myself in isolation. And one of the things that we, like, cause I asked him like, damn, like, bro, like, where does these hats come from? The dreads and the, the swagger and like, like you're you. Mm -hmm. And you said, bro, when I, <clears throat> when, you know, went from Florida to Auburn or there was a part of your process in college where you were in isolation. Mm -hmm. And you said, that's where I met myself and understood myself. So that was what? 20-year-old Cam, maybe? 21. 21-year-old Cam. 39-year-old Cam. I mean, 39-year-old Brandon sitting in isolation. For the I know, first time. For the first time. I know who Brandon Marshall is, the football player. I'm a Hall of Famer. Never sit it like that ever, 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 ever. I know who Brandon Marshall is, the entrepreneur. Who is Brandon Marshall? So, like... The human. Period. Bro, all of that. The spirit. You know, all of that, bro. Take Strip all of the titles away. You know what I'm saying? So, like, being in that space, because, like, I can't, right now, I'm so protective of, like, who I'm around and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I needed that. See... And I'm gonna be so obedient to this to this time right now, but 
in large part, bro, respectfully, I hope you trust me, right? Because in order to in order to fix something the right way, in a real fucked up situation, you gotta tear it down. Mm-hmm. Right? And I say to myself, and I and and that that then I already knew you was a solid cat. But that experience that we had outside of there was just like, yo, I can help this dude. I want to help him. You feel me? And I found out, like, respectfully about your your relationship. Mm-hmm. I, I also found out other things about you that I was like, bro, you you got too much shit bottled in, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the people who probably know the brand in there is like, bro, he. I done seen him cross. I done seen him cry too. Like the dude so bipolar, bro. Look at his crazy ass. He don't went from raw to eh, to raw to eh. like. Well, that's, that's all. Great. That's all. That's all. No, like I want to say that. Let me jump in there, right? About that, right? Because like, there's a stigma around mental health. Mm-hmm. We all have ebbs and flows to life and different emotions, and so when I stood up in 2011 and I said. Yo, this is what I've been dealing with. Um, This is who I am. This is what I want to do moving forward. Immediately, there was a bigger target on my back. So literally, when I would go into games, I knew after a good play or bad play, there was going to be four cameras on me getting my reaction. So I had to be like this, okay? Because if I did what Stephon Diggs did, Tom Brady did, what you did, what fucking Aaron Rodgers did. Oh, oh, look at the mental health. He crazy, he cuckoo. Right? So I always had to try to be here. There's no freedom in there. That's a, and that's a whole nother conversation. So because I stood up and I was brave enough to say like, and now everybody talking about it. This is what I dealt with. This is what's going on with me. This is what I want to do moving forward. Now it's like any type of emotion that I show, he's this, he's that. Come on, man. I'm very aware of what's going on and what I'm doing. I know my challenges. know my strength. I know my weaknesses. You know what I'm saying? So like that's also a part of the stigma. That's also a part of stigma. And we had this legendary moment on I Am Mathlete. And after this moment, we sat down collectively as a team. And there was like, damn, should we do this? And I was like, damn, this is not a good look for me. And there was like, this would be so great for the platform. It was the conversation around NBA contracts when I lost it. I was like, ah. That, that was a meme. It was- that was a meme. It was forever me. The reason why I responded that way is because Ocho looked at me and he said, you need to take your meds. You're crazy. And instead of me sitting there saying like, yo, bro, that hurt my feelings, which I did the next episode, I said, let me tell y'all why I responded this way and I apologize. But like, damn, that really hurt my feelings. Instead of me doing that as a man, what I did is, it's like, that's how, we, that's brute strength. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? What the fuck you, ta-? what I really wanted to say to Ocho was yeah. nigga, who the fuck you talking to? Mm-hmm. Like, do you understand what I fought for and, and everything I've gone through to be on the other side of this? And for you to diminish me by saying some medication or something like that? I ain't never take no medication. What are you talking about? No, I can't, instead of me facing that as a man and being like, bro, that hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. I feel like you shouldn't have said that because now it's playing into the stigma. I said, oh, now I'm a mean. Mm-hmm. Right? So that... You know, I, I think we have to be careful when we're having these conversations. And I feel as one of the first to ever start, like, have this conversation at that level, there's a lot of pressure on me to champion that, right? Because there's a lot of stigma around mental health. So and I just want to clarify that because, you know, you know I'm going to live with that for forever. But I'm very aware of what's going on and all my challenges and, like, you know, what I need to do and what I don't need to do. But I would say this, though, and and this is and will be my challenge to you. You got to identify your triggers, bro. Oh, for sure. 
You, like when you're like going back to me in 2015 when I had to walk off and I had to just say like, yo, bro, like that was me identifying like, bro, I'm not healthy. I'm not okay. That's right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, listen, respect, I got to leave. I got to go. Boom. However you handle that, that's a you versus you thing. And while you're going on these journeys, right? I would. So did you fight or flight that situation? Flight. I fight. But I think whether you choose one or the other, I think it's a loss if you don't identify. But I, I, I did. You see what I'm saying? So, so when you're going on this mental journey with whatever you got going on, like B. Marsh, like I'm telling you, bro, like. But that's what I'm saying to you. I have, though. Mm -hmm. And I, I just brought that up because some people choose flight. Some people choose fight. Now, what I'm choosing is more um, neutral, more stoic. Because what you feel and what I feel is the same. Mm. How we may respond to it may be differently. Yeah. You understand? So, like... <clears throat> everyone deals with things and you know I'm very aware of like what's going on and what I feel it's just like bro like you know my father was one of the biggest drug dealers in the northeast and he hates when I talk about it but this is my story and you know I've seen everything I was a part of everything you know, and it and it's not a unique story. I think it's a unique, a universal story. But where we come from, you know what I mean. You got to think about how we respond to stuff. So a lot of this stuff that people say may be mental health or this and that, that's just how we respond that's, when we where we stress. come from. Right. Not even stress. It's just like you mm -hmm. got to think about like you stepped on my shoe. You ain't apologize. You need to apologize. Oh, you're not going to apologize. Boom. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, those are the things that we also, as just people, need to understand when you talk about triggers and then there's upbringing, there's experiences and so many other things. So a lot of that is just like where I come from. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like playing ball. You know, this coach called me motherfucker. You need to go do this. Who are you talking to? My dad don't talk to me that way. He him. Right? So... <clears throat> You know, I think that we also got to understand, you know, the makeup of a person and the ideology behind, you know, someone's upbringing. So, you know, there's a lot of stigma around mental health. And it's just like what I tell people all the time is like, you know, so, yeah, there's one side there. But also, do you understand who I am and where I come from? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's a whole nother conversation. And, and, and I appreciate the platform for, for us being able to peel back these layers for sure. Yeah, like... I'll say this to you, bro. Like, you're a smart-ass person. And su almost surprisingly, you know what I'm saying? Like, when, when you see your figure, like, big in stature, you be like, bro, what position you play receiver? Like, damn, bro. Like, he was like the first modern-day kind of physical off the branch of T.O., right. the Julios, the Brandon Marshalls, like these big physical receivers, you know, that's athletic and can move, right? And I was blown away by you, you sent me the corporate structure of business as far as a production company. And I was like, oh, wow, I need to step my game up. Mm -hmm. Also, too, this is a person who I saw from afar when I talked to my team. I said, hey, look at this clip right here from I Am Athlete. Like, you see the thumbnail that they're using? We got to use that type of thumbnail. Matter of fact, we need an intro. I Am Athlete, like, boom, that intro song, like, like boom, like, we got to, boom, you see, the, you see the guests that they got? Bro, we got to do the... Boom. Hey, Cam, bro, I'm in Atlanta. Hey, I want you to show up to my, uh, you know, a live show. Man, all right, bro. Like, I ain't going to keep giving you no freebies, bro. Like, <laughs> that ain't, uh-uh. Nah, dog. Boom. Matter of fact, bro, what, what time you said it was? Bro, it's at 8, bro. Boom, it's 7.15. All right, bet. Cool. What you said it was? Send me the address. Boom. 35 minutes away. All right, cool. Boom. I'll be there right on time. Boom. Then I see it, and I'm like, whoa. 
soon as that live show is over, I t hey, bro, I wish I had my phone, but bro, I see the future of Funky Friday Live right now. So whether it's Channing, whether it's all these people, I'm I'm not gonna sit up here and 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 and, and not give you your flowers, bro, and not saying that they are not. But what I am saying is, bro, you are a pioneer in ways that you're more than just an athlete. You more than just what people see. And through that, you've inspired me to be better. Not in that old jealous way, like, Psh, the fuck? Like, why y'all go over there to come? Huh, it's like, hey, bro, matter of fact, I know who gonna tell me. Yo, B. Mars, yeah, what's up, bro? Blah, 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 blah. 15 Yo. minutes later. Hey, this is the reason why I called you. Boom. Hey, how much you charge so-and-so to come on your show? Nothing. What? <laughs> why you ask me that? Bro, this motherfucker tried to charge me X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Oh, bro, he tried you. Right? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. 45 minutes later. Hell yeah, bro. Like, so those type of conversations, bro, you never gatekeep me, bro. Right. Never. And that alone... When I see the vulnerable side, and when you said, bro, I need to work on season five, bro, I need to do this, I need to do that, I don't know your people's behind the scenes. And I'm like, you gotta come on my side <laughs> because number one, I'm gonna hold you accountable, mm -hmm. right? Do you have validation for feeling the way you feel on a lot of stuff? Yes, but the boss in you, bro, have to be able to put ego, the acronym of ego that I use is easing God out. If you can remove that and say, okay, cool. Did I take a loss? Boom, cool. But bro, what we can do together? <whistles> Businessman, black man, pioneer, you do it your way, I do it my way. But at least we doing it together. Right. That's more powerful. It's not, man, fuck them, it's on site, man, this and then that. That's the typical African-American beef. Right, right. And that's what I don't like. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, I told them the same thing. I'm telling you the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it's going to happen when you're at peace with yourself. Mm -hmm. Are you there now? Who knows? Only you know that. Are you dealing with a lot? Hell yeah, shit. Welcome to every other person in this world. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, dog, you got too much shit good for somebody to throw smut on something that could easily be, not easily be resolved, but it's worth the resolving if it's done because peace will be projected. Right. Damn, Cam. How you want me to respond to that, Cam? I don't. You don't. You want me to just Thank soak you. it in? <laughs> you said you're on a yoga shit, right? You yeah. meditating. Just let it simmer, just like them collard greens and Thanksgiving. Just let it simmer in the broth. Damn. Damn. Now, before we end this show. Damn. I know, bro. I'm driving, bro. We, <laughs> yeah. we driving. You there. sick, bro. Look, you a sick person. <laughs> we driving, bro. You feel me? I'm going to let you have your way on your Look, show. Look, bro. <laughs> What's next? What's next for I Am Athlete? Yeah. You know what? Um, that's what I love about this space is we can learn a lot from each other. Um, there are some gatekeepers in this space, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people that inspire me and push me. And uh, going back to day one, when I used to talk, talk to you about what you were doing, you know, you always pushed me to think bigger and think bigger for myself and more highly of myself. And so I said it earlier, it's like, man, I'm competing against you. We're not. But think, hold on, stay with me, Linda. Listen, Linda, it's friendly competition. I don't want to catch a straight bullet, though. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is, it's like, when I say competing, it's like, it's more from a, think of it from, from an inspiration standpoint. And it's just like, Bro, what you have built here and what you have done in the conversation that we've had offline, it really inspired me to say, you know what, B? 
you can sit down one on one. You can do that. Mm. And I said it earlier. I was like, yo, like, who's gonna be the Oprah of sports? Who's gonna be the Oprah of this sport of this space? Who's gonna be the Oprah of new media? Being honest with you, Cam, it's just you. So I'm competing. It's like balls. Like, what do you want me to say to you? Like, bro, I want the sports in me. <laughs> they they only got one. <laughs> Uh, did a net, did a net, uh, and the uh, number one podcast of the year, one on one show goes to is it gonna be Cam Newton or Brandon Marshall? <laughs> yeah. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna be watching film like, well, they did that. Hey, <laughs> pay. Come here, motherfucker. Look at that. They did the blue shirt. We gonna do the black oh, shirt. Oh, look, 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 Cam. So look, boom. I leave. You know, because you hit me, it was like, yo, bro, I'm, I ain't giving you no more freebies. I, you know what I'm saying? You owe me two to three. So I fly to Atlanta. I see what you got going on with the little show. Can I talk about the show? Can we, y'all drop that yet? Yeah, yeah. No, we haven't. Yeah. Can I say it? Fear Pong? Mm-hmm. Boom, Fear Pong. So I'm looking at it, <clears throat> and then I'm looking at the thumbnails. What you think I did when I go home? Everybody go look at his thumbnails. <laughs> Do what Cam Newton is doing. <laughs> so, no, you inspire me, bro. Like, and it's funny how it comes full circle. So when you ask me what's next, it's like, I love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And just the space that I'm in, I need a sacred space. Um, I'm really excited about one-on-one -on -one conversations. Mm -hmm. There's still a space on I Am Athlete, and we'll get there probably in Q1, Q2 of next year, 2024. We'll bring back the banter show and have multiple personalities. I'm still in good position with other guys that's been on our show before. But what I need right now, it's like, I want to learn. Mm. I want to go deep. I want to have this conversation. I want to cry. I want to laugh, but like in a real way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like to be able to make, to, to ensure that I can do that is one-on-one. -on -one. So I'll do one-on-one, -on -one, bro. So season five of I Am Athlete will feature... A multiple cast or? So I, I live day to day right now. What I will say is majority of season five, maybe all of season five would be one on one. You say you living day to day. You know, the, the you easy like layup that. was like, man, you know, you're crazy now. Like, so you know. <laughs> Stop. Okay. No, but no, but I say that because there's opportunity, right? Like I, I, there is a space for what we, the template that we created from the jump. Yeah. And, and, and so, like, I'll feel it, but I'm going off of how I feel. Like, I don't know if I'll ever go back to that space, if I'm being honest. Mm. Like, I always, like, I, I can care less about the banter. I can care less to talk about sports. I Man, I want to talk to you about, bro, how you doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where you at mentally? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? So, like, all the other stuff. There's, it was a phase. It was a it was chapter. A, it was a phase. I, I, I can see myself doing it here and there, but there's other guys that can own that now. Like, I'm on this type of conversation. I love the space that you created. So, yeah. like, thank you for paving the way for me. And now we compete. I love it. Because the truth of the matter is, bro, however you want to look at this shit, you want to look at it like Kanye, Jay-Z. You want to look at it like... Who's Kanye? Who's Jay-Z? Exactly. Who, who are you? I don't give a who damn, bro. No, no, you no. You look give at a damn. Who Fox are you? and CBS... You want to look at Brady, Peyton, however you want to look at it, bro. At the end of the day, the competitor in me will always come out on top. Okay, so all right, I, I hear that. Mm -hmm. Who's Jay-Z, who's Kanye, who's Fox, who's, and who's Peyton, who's Tom Brady? I'm um, me. No, but come on for the people. You Respectfully, are- Respectfully, I'm um, me. See, that's scared. That's what I can't. That's scared. But what I will say, you could, I think this is the good closing thing <laughs> for really what's next for us. Right. I think last time, or one of the experiences that I thought was extremely dope was live shows. And I said, yo, bro, like, I really would want to do that. And Doing it in a way where I want to create an experience. I always got to do it for the culture. Mm -hmm. I want to have fun. I want to, I want to be honest. I want to have accountability. And I really want to control 
the narrative from the athlete's perspective. Because LeBron spoke for a generation of athletes when he said, we're more than just athletes, right? Mm -hmm. And I think what we could create what we could create is something that has never, I don't think the space has ever seen it. Ever. Right? Details to follow, I don't think we should name the name. Okay. You the quarterback, so listen, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, so we all, we all got alignment is critical. You gotta learn from your past. We need no breakups. <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> Listen, you the quarterback. I'm the wide receiver. No. And you always know, quarterback is the head honcho. So when it comes down to the final say, I'm going to give you the final say. So if you say we ain't going to drop no names, we ain't going to drop no names. But I really hope you can get your business in order so that... <laughs> You're a jerk. That we can, You're a jerk. Uh, go, on, go on tour together, you feel what I'm saying? Because I think it's needed, bro. I Hold think... on, what you say? I, you kind of kind of glossed over that. No, nah, it's okay. You remember that. Go on tour. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, so, Jesus. As we no, 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 I ain't going to say that. I've been talking to this man for two years. It's about coming in, doing this. It's going to be beautiful. Mwah. Bruh. What market? <clears throat> you said it. We have an amazing opportunity to bring something to life that's never been created and never existed. And there's so much synergy between you and I, but there's huge contrast, right? And like, we've been trying to kick around this theme of like, what's the theme? And it's like yin yang, you know, blue, red, white, black. And so I think what we're bringing to the market is an experience and, and a creative approach that's never existed in podcasts and live shows. And so I think that we be smart and we do a couple cities to start working up to the Super Bowl um, and bringing it all together. So Atlanta loves us. Mm. Charlotte loves us. Mm. Chicago loves us. Mm. I mean, there's so many cities that loves us. You know, we can go, you know, you go Miami, LA, you got the, even the Bahamas, you got London, you got so many places. But I think what you and I need to do is just think about like, what's the three, two to three leading up to Vegas? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then after that, we regroup and figure out if I'm a good business partner or not. Please, because I'm Right, because like, <laughs> you're a bad bitch. <laughs> I know he got a good business mind, but that don't mean he do good business. Yeah, right. I mean, right. Say, bro, I don't be... operate. I don't operate off fear, bro. I operate off of, of faith base, and I know, like, you know, your team, the people you got that you work alongside with. Let's just put it that way. And obviously, my team is a creative group that is yearning for just ideas to, to put a pulse and a heartbeat and a DNA into it, and boom, let's just see what happens. That's right. So, yeah, I'm excited about that, man. So as we end things here at Funky Friday, we're going to go in unison. We're going to start with this camera right here together. Then we're going to go to this camera right here together. Then we're going to finish with that camera right there together. B, I don't do bad business. I got to pay my folks overtime. Troy, how much? How much owe you, Troy? <laughs> Bad business. Bad business. Put come on in the boat. <laughs> but I love that though. But I, man, I first off, let me say this, and I have to say this, and this is not going to get cut out. Behind every great thing is a great grind. And I'm nothing without an unbelievable team. Whether you're a contractor, whether you're full-time, whether you're a person who I just met or a person who has inspired me, I thank you. The Troys of the world, the Waldos of the world, 
the B. Marshes of the world, the Christians of the world, the Ashes of the world, the Breelands of the world, the Kents of the world, the, Bre the Brendans of the world, the VJs of the world, the Peggy's of the world. So many different people that helped me be me, all right? And that's just one side. I can go to so many different other businesses, but that right there, they, it's nine o'clock right now, and I have an unbelievable supporting cast of people who's taking care of my children right now. And team is important. And I thank y'all, like real shit, for the things that I see and the things that I don't even, don't even see and the effort that goes into it. And I'm getting tired, but back to how we close it. Thank you, all right? So wake your ass up. That was beautiful. That thank was you, beautiful. Bro. That was really good. Thank you. So we're going to end this show looking here, then looking there. Is it one looking. finger, one finger? Da, 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 It's yeah. my show, bro. This ain't Is I it, Am It's athlete, not I Am Athlete? Oh, no, bro. No. Oh. Oh. OK. You competition. Yeah. I'm the Oprah <laughs> of this space. <laughs> here we go. One finger, one pinky, one thumb, all together, one love. Damn, bro. We. On my show, you got to do what I say, bro. <laughs> but when if it if it come together, like then who? What? You know what? I, I'll tell you this right now. It's about alignment. I'm gonna follow your lead. I'm gonna let you run with it. He's institutional. You can yeah, train this you old ass it. dog. Damn. Here we go. One finger. One pinky. One thumb. All together. One love. God, lead this Did thing. I do it right? No, you didn't. You got to say all together, and then it's one love. Oh, <laughs> Now I got to pay Troy more because now he's like, bro, do I got people heart? struggle with this? Yes, bro. Okay, cool. So I ain't the only one. I ain't, there's other slow blinkers. They said you cuckoo now. They slow. <laughs> Stop, I bro. Love it. I love it. <laughs> Look, it's here, okay. then there, then oh! there. Yeah. So boom, 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 yeah. boom. No. Boom, boom, boom. One you know oh, you're in oh, trouble when you got right, Peggy man. directing you. Man, like, go. That blinker ain't even on. Yeah. <laughs> Cut. Here we go. One finger, one pinky, one thumb. Hold on, I messed up. Did it again. Did it again. Okay, go, go. I'm ready. Go, 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 go. Father God, I just ask you to give this guy some enlightenment and understanding. Here we go. One finger, one pinky, one thumb, all together, one love. Oh! Yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate you.